Hey now, hey now, I want to welcome everybody here to an all new You Need a Horror podcast, and I'm not going to BS too much. Nick, we got, we watched a movie on the damn show. What's going on? Real big fish, man. We reeled these bastards in. We even got Jay. <laughs> you did. <Damn>. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> Guys, uh, well, thank you, first of all, for being on the show. I mean, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it truly is an honor. I've been watching you guys. Let's just get into it right here, guys. Like when I think of we watched a movie, I go back to the the Wild West days of YouTube. I'm talking about like 2012, where it was like there were no rules. You got you guys got to miss that time at, at certain points. Right. Do you ever look back and think like, damn, it was how different was the platform back then for you guys? Because it was like you just did whatever. Right. There was no we didn't we didn't have ways we reviewed movies properly things like it was like the wild west right hell yeah dude i miss that shit so bad i miss that i miss all of it we did some weird stuff didn't we dude like there was mm. one video where we were like punching each other with hulk gloves another video would be eating taco bell like it didn't matter there was no algorithm to worry about you just put your shit out there and sometimes it took off and sometimes it didn't but yeah i miss that shit man yeah man and the mediocre comedy stayed the same that was the best part <laughs> That was no, always one, the best part. <laughs> one of my favorite things you guys did, and they've mentioned it many times when they were fucking around on that treadmill and shit at, uh, I think, Jay's old house and mm. <laughs> knocked a hole in the wall and you could hear Jay's ex-wife like screaming at him in the background. Yeah, Man. Dude, that's like that was like opening up the Necronomicon and hearing the evil lords coming through. Like to hear that <laughs> scream, awful. Yeah. You know, I, so like I said, I've been watching you guys for such a long time, and I'm trying to think back when the first time I saw you guys, but y'all are a really small channel at the time. This was years ago, and I say small, you probably had like a, I don't know, 1,500 subs or anything like that. When I think back to it, when did you guys, did anybody influence you to get into this YouTube game? And I, but I guess we should start before that, honestly, because... I've I've watched you guys so often throughout the years, but I don't ever recall the story. Are you guys childhood friends? How did how did the whole thing start and the birth of the channel? I'll let Jay tell you that story because it, it all started on a rainy story. night. We were outside of a Motley Crue concert, nineteen seventy six, <laughs> and I was like, "Hey, no." Uh, well, it was, it's actually funny. Uh, Mike and I had actually, yeah, we grew up together. I've uh, been lifelong best friends, and uh, kind of drifted apart, uh, you know, as you do as we got older and then around, I don't know, maybe 2007 Halo three was coming out and we were like into that hardcore, like playing the shit out of that. So we kind of reconnected through that, through multiplayer. So I started watching, um, YouTube around, I don't know. Well, 2007, I was, I was kind of getting into YouTube and then I'd started watching other channels and they were viewing movies, kind of dicking around and whatever. And I was telling Mike one time after we were like done bashing some 13 year olds in the, in, in the pregame <laughs> lobby, I was like, Hey man, you know, it'd be really cool. It's like, we should talk about movies and shit and just you know, like carry over what we're doing here basically fucking around online and doing this, you know, for the, you know, YouTube. And then Mike was like, I don't know about that, dude, because we kind of sucked in comedy. I was like, I know that's true, but I see a lot of other people doing it and they're not that good. We can try it. So, you know, a, a roundabout way, that's exactly how it started. And then Mike took it to another level and, you know, he basically dragged me to do it because I, I said it, I, I want to do it. And then Mike was like, well, let's go, let's go watch a movie. And I was like, nah, man, I don't want to. <laughs> I was like, maybe later. Well, and he was like, well, dude, are you going to fucking do it or not? Like, I mean, either you're in or you're out. Like, it was like a Rocky Balboa speech. So I was like, I got to get on the shit. Or I got to get out of the pot and take a shit or I bought this. So that's pretty much how it started. So it was pretty much inspired through, I don't know, Halo 3 and, you know, playing multiplayer and hanging out and doing that kind of stuff and then reconnecting. And then uh, I don't remember uh, the channel that I remember watching uh, early on um, was Ray William Johnson. I watched him a lot back in the day and I thought that was cool. But then I was, as far as movie review channels, I... I can't, there was like a, I know there was a guy and I cannot remember his name for the life of me, but I followed him for quite a while, but that's, yeah, I started watching that guy and I was like, yeah, we could probably do that. I mean, probably shittier than him, but we could probably try it. So that's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The only one that I even knew about, like I didn't even watch any YouTube when we started doing it, but there was this podcast that uh, I, I worked at ACS and I would scan x-rays all day long and I would listen to this podcast called Film Junk and it's a bunch of Canadian dudes. Uh, one of the guys it, it turned into a pretty successful director. He did that. You know, our shutter has that cursed projects show or whatever. Yes. Uh, he's directed a couple of those and he's had stuff, but they, there were these Canadians and they were talking about movies. And I just, I remember love listening to that because I'd always been a hardcore movie guy. And then like, it was cool. Cause I remember that was right about the time Nicholas Cage's knowing came out. And I remember going home, like I hadn't heard about that and watching it and being like, it's cool to watch something like this and have 
these three dudes or however many were on the podcast and hear them talk about it or this next movie, like, Oh, I better check that out. So that was like my favorite thing about doing it is because it gave you an excuse to just watch more movies and like join more genres of like fans and shit like that. But yeah, I, I didn't watch any YouTube myself. It's crazy too, because like, yeah, it gives you more reason to watch more movies and stuff also, but it also gives you reason to be like, you listen and you're like, Oh fuck this guy. This guy doesn't know what he's talking about. This movie kicks ass. Like one thing that I wanted to mention is like Christian and I are very outward with our like love for Rob Zombie's Halloween too. And like you guys hate that fucking movie <laughs> and I love your channel. Hey, and I've been watching pissed. you guys for like a decade, but like, I've always been like, I'm going to let that slide because I love Mike and Jay. Like, I, I do. <laughs> but it's like, we are like the bastard children that like that movie. But I can't help but laugh when you guys talk about Rob Zombie and his movies because it's like, as much as I like some of his movies, you're not wrong. Like, I can't say you're wrong. <laughs> so it's just... I think I, I I mean I love Rob Zombie. I think he's a good Christian wholesome man. That's a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I, yeah, we we definitely have some disagreements with Rob Zombie, and uh, you know, I, look, I know there's a huge fan, well, there's a fan base anyway for Halloween too, for Rob Zombie's Halloween too, and that's fine. And Danny, and you know, not to shit on anybody that likes Halloween too, but it's just for me personally when I look at Rob Zombie. It's like that line in Varsity Blues. It's like you've got to be the smartest dumb kid I've ever met in my life because it's like <laughs> this guy that's got all this like raw talent to be some, you know, and he, and he knows how to shoot the movie and he knows, but it's just sometimes it falls apart like he's so pissed off that he's trying to prove something sometimes. And that's just the way I, I view him some, you know, otherwise, yeah, that's. I got and bad I taste, Jay. Is that a crime move. if I have bad taste? No, sir. Not not in Kentucky. We all got bad taste Feedback. around here. <laughs> <laughs> we have horrible fucking taste. Well, it's funny that you mentioned Halloween, too, because I went to see that. Jay didn't go that night, but I went with Jay's brother and somebody else. And the first night I go to see it, we had, the channel hadn't started. The channel was still three years away at this point. But I sat down and watched it. I, I, I really do get why people love it, because I sat down the first time and I watched it. And it ended, and we're walking out, and my friends were like, God, that fucking sucked. That was such a piece of shit. And I was like, dude, that was either the greatest movie I've ever seen or the worst movie I've ever seen, and I'm not fucking sure right now. So, like, I even went on, like, Rotten Tomatoes, and I was like, you all don't understand. This movie's a fucking masterpiece. Like, it was amazing. He was so mean and brutal and all this, and it was crazy, and it was exactly what the Halloween franchise needed. And I forced my wife to go to the drive-in the next night to see it. And we sat there, and the whole time I watched it going, oh, what did I say? Like, this is fucking awful. What was I on? Like, what was going on? So I understand why people love it. I really do. It's just a gonzo Halloween movie. It is. It is. And and Christian, I was telling Christian about this. I was probably about a month and a half, two months ago. I We had been talking about, we got to get Mike and Jay on the pod. Like, obviously, in the horror community on YouTube, you guys are it i mean obviously people are like oh yo well like dead meat like yeah but that motherfucker's numbers are like astronomical like we, that's insane but he's like, up here <laughs> yeah but it's like you know after that i would i would immediately go probably we watched a movie like and so we had been talking about it for months oh don't thank me to thank you for 10 years of fucking making me laugh even if i don't agree all the time but like it's it's fucking awesome but anyway i was yeah, but it probably I, makes you a smarter man <laughs> I, I don't know about that, but I went and uh, on one of your live streams, I was like, hey, Christian, shot in the dark. I'm just going to fucking send a super chat in and I'm going to say we want you guys on the podcast. And Christian was like, fuck it. Do it, man. And I did it. And I also asked for Jay to do it in his Loomis voice. And Jay was like, Unida. Unita, he's like, that sounds disgusting. And they're yeah, like, is, is that how you say it? And I just remember being like, Christian, fuck. They don't they, they don't even know what like who we are, what we are. I was like, we're fucked. Like, we have no chance. Well, but it all led so it's to crazy today. that you guys are here. Yeah, it's crazy that you guys are here because, like, man, I, we we were like that number one, like top of the wish list. It was you guys. Like, and so but yeah, Jay, I just want to say you made me laugh trying to pronounce the name. And, oh, and it's yeah. because of the Unita Medical Supply from Return of the Living Dead, which is Christian's oh, nice. favorite horror movie. Yeah. You know, yeah, I, I'm a Again, dumbass. Bad taste. But, but, well, no, dude, I know. <laughs> but but also on top of that, like, it's one of those things with when you're doing that Loomis thing anyway. It's like, it's you're going to have to be like a little like uh, mean or some shit like that. Like, I don't know. I always feel like he's a cross between the crazy Loomis from five and six and Sanford and son. Sure. <laughs> you know, like he's Red a Fox. dick. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like that. But yeah. Uh, yeah, it was awesome, man. I'm glad that you guys uh, brought us on here. You guys seem like awesome dudes, and I'm glad to be here. Well, we well, still have the rest of the show if you do decide. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that's yeah, right. And it, it works both way. ways. <laughs> but Mike so. or Jay, were either one of you guys ever members on the OHMB, the official Halloween message board, way back in the day? 
Dude, I got kicked off of that like as mm. soon as we started this channel. Please I think start. That was the one. Please tell the story. Yeah, tell I us think, what happened. I don't remember. Uh, I said something. I don't remember what I said. It wasn't anything outrageous or anything. Halloween's but I think, pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like that dude's fucking mask, bro. That's awesome. Uh, but no, I, I posted something, and I think I think maybe at the end of it, and we had just started the channel. But I think maybe at the end of my post, I said something like, we're starting a YouTube channel. I hope you guys like it. And some, some guy uh, blocked me and sent an email. And where our name was, we watched a movie. He was like, uh, we just got blocked. And like was being a smart ass about it. It was like, fuck you guys. Get out of here. You know, and he even like changed our name to like a, a big fuck you. And I can't remember what it was I said. It wasn't anything bad. I think I just tried to promote us or something, which when you're new and you don't know that that's not how shit works, which it's not, you know, you don't just come out in your first video and be like, hey, can all of Dead Meat's fans please follow me? Because that would be cool. My mom would really like that if you guys <laughs> yeah. just subscribe. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's ways to go about things and you learn and you have to embarrass yourself and learn when you're coming up and through that. But yeah, I'm pretty sure we got blocked from there. Like I said, and I had been a member of that before. And I miss that just like I miss IMDb message boards. Did you guys ever do those? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And that, I'm not a message that... board guy. No. Well, yeah. <laughs> and the, the reason I bring it up is because with Jay's talking about with Loomis, like how he feels like he's a cross between this and that. There was literally a fucking thread on the Halloween message board, and it was just titled, Dr. Loomis is a fucking dick. And it was like... <laughs> everybody on the message board giving different examples of why he's a dick. Like he parked in a handicapped spot in Halloween, 1978. He's a fucking dick. Like, and it was just like the best thread ever because like when you actually think about it, all the evidence proves like, yeah, dude, he's a dick. So no, Jay, you, you nail it. You, you nail it when you do it. He was a fucking dick. We, we just yeah. need to be honest about it. I think the clearest yeah. uh, indication of that is in yeah. Halloween five. I mean, he basically literally shook a little girl <laughs> almost into unconsciousness. So <laughs> it's like, um, it's a cookie woman what the hell is that? <laughs> yeah, he went up to a mute girl. It was like, <sighs> speak. Why would you talk? You know, like, he's, he's been through a lot. Yeah. <laughs> he fucking used her as bait in the end of the movie. Yeah, he was yeah, like, yeah. Oh, come on, Michael, come get her. Like, Jesus yeah, even Christ, as a kid, dude. when I watched that, I was like, that's a little fucked up. I don't know about all that. But, <laughs> yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. So. Well, you, know, you guys remember the R. Kelly thing, right? Like the right when the R. Kelly thing broke and he was on CBS and he was like, he was like, yeah. I don't what what was the line that he said? He was like, You're tearing me apart or something like that. that yeah, he said. oh yeah, like, y'all yeah, yeah. killing me with this shit, man. <laughs> yeah, y'all killing me with this shit. <laughs> we literally made a video based on that. And like, I don't, I don't know if you guys saw it or not. I I remember that. I yeah, I remember we took that. the little mm -hmm. CBS logo and put it in the corner and we did Dr. Loomis instead of R. Kelly. <laughs> and I oh, was yeah. like, you know. You yelled at a mute girl like you were in her face screaming. People say that you're abusive to your patients. And he's like, I don't know what the fuck to talk about or whatever. And like we did a whole video based on just him being a dick. And it, it works. It yeah, does. Because he's a dick. You know, you know, Jay, I've never had a conversation with you before, but you strike me as the kind of guy that just doesn't deal with much of the Internet bullshit. Do you are you not on Twitter or Instagram or anything? I don't know what that is. Is that some moving company that I'm on? Is that? Yeah. No, I have, yeah. I have no idea. No, I'm not. I don't know how to. Well, first of all, I don't know how to use it. <laughs> like, I have no idea. Uh, and second off, yeah, I like it's there's so much. There's like a huge shit storm I see all the time on people like getting into massive fights on Twitter and, and even on fucking Instagram where I thought you're just supposed to p post a picture of your like you and your cat or something doing a crazy pose. And they're like, oh, no, uh, who'd you vote for, motherfucker? I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> the picture of my cat uh but uh, you know that so i'm Who'd not your fucking cat guys. vote for jay i don't fucking know <laughs> Puss in boots. Puss is there a, in boots. Is there a uh, dr but, loomis page that y'all have made no, I, of you I, we th we thought about doing it as a joke like i actually uh, mike and i actually had, a, I had an idea uh we were going to do like a dr loomis twitter and then uh mike was going to do a michael myers twitter and they would just rage at each other through twitter like That'd he was great. actually gonna yeah but no I'm, i don't you need a TikTok. Do. You need to have your Dr. Loomis TikTok. I mean, Mike, that's yeah. money, man. Dude, hey, you're telling me I had him do it. I made him do it. I was like, Jay, mm. dude, please just put on the fucking coat, turn on TikTok, press the fucking report cord button, and just go. It's just like talk about whatever's going on in the world today. He did do a couple. <laughs> there's a couple on our TikTok of him doing it. Yeah. No shit. And then I was like, I don't know, because I didn't know what, because I, it's not that I ran anything to talk about, because there was always something to talk about. But then I noticed that you had, like, I, I think the maximum is three minutes like that you can put on up a video or whatever like i think you could do like three minutes ma max, max and i was like i don't yeah. know i got more shit to say and i was like i gotta fucking figure out how to cut this shit. i don't know but yeah i mean there might be more but as far as the internet bullshit goes i i mean i i left facebook not long ago and for the you know there's just there's just a lot of 
butt hurt people running around and saying a it's lot good of for your mental shit. health I'm off. It really, it, like it, a year yeah. ago yeah yeah it's it, you know you're taking a, a step back and not really dealing with it is okay with me so that's what i do yeah i let mike deal with it that's why that's what that's what i do yeah <laughs> yeah no I, I never had any question on your guys's social media accounts because knowing your guys's personalities is like it you can clearly tell it's mike like it's mike yeah. on their social I did, media i assume I've always mike ran known, everything yeah probably yeah. a bad thing yeah but no i i do it too much like i get fucking pissed and i'm like no fuck fuck you know brandon 212 i'm gonna fight this fucking 12 year old all goddamn day and then by the end of it i'm just like i just filled up our entire feed just screaming at a 13 year old and i didn't find out till the end that he was 13 and now yeah, I'm we, fucking ask him. it'll get you mike mike and i exchange words not like bad but like we exchange words like a year ago about lebron james because he <laughs> loves to shit on lebron james and LeBron i love really lebron does. james and he was going right back at me about it. And I'm like, and I even said, like, at the end of it, I'm like, dude, I love your guys' shit. Like, I don't take any of it personal. But, like, who, who I, is the, the LeBron fan way. and who's not the LeBron fan? I'm the LeBron, LeBron fan. He does not like LeBron. Oh, Do you think he's as good as Michael Jordan? Fuck no. Oh, you, sorry. You answer that. You answer. It's your show. Dude. I'm not. I don't want to answer I that. Shit. <laughs> I'm, I don't want to answer that. But Mike does not think so. That, we'll, we'll say that. <laughs> All I right. started a whole separate Twitter. Like I started a whole separate Twitter because I, I caught myself like, dude, you're just constantly running your mouth on. I like I have kids. I have shit to do. I have videos that I didn't shit to do. I'll I'll get in a fight and just be like, where the fuck did my day just go? I'm arguing with, you know, whoever. <laughs> Brandon whatever, Brandon two one two. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I fucking goddamn Brandon. My wife's like, honey, can you give the kid a bath? I'm like, not right fucking now. I have a seriously <laughs> argument with this 12 year old about LeBron. <laughs> not not you. But um, but I literally started a separate one just so I could talk shit because like. When it comes to movies, I feel like I have my shit together and I can I try to be respectful of other people's opinions and stuff. When it comes to sports, that's like where I put all my shitty fucking energy. So like I try to just leave that on the other Twitter account. Sure. And that's I've seen you guys do videos after the Packers have lost a game. Jay, how is that? <laughs> when the Packers have recently lost, how is Mike to be around? I mean, sometimes like it's like it's like if you're with your girl or something and then there's no there's no tampons left and she's pissed as fuck and then you gotta go out and you're gonna be like fuck I gotta no it's all right I don't know does I just he, like to he give doesn't him... I get no he doesn't I hurt like... you does he he doesn't hurt I mean, you not not when the cameras are on <laughs> I mean, he's not stupid I uh, know I know it's more like uh it's fine it's, it's I always like you know uh, give him a hard time about it but I don't really follow football or like sports that that, that closely so I really don't know I just like hey I saw that the fucking Packers lost like, oh yeah <laughs> he'll rub it in there he'll rub it in Mike's yeah. face they'll be doing an unboxing they'll be like yeah the Packers fucking suck like what about Aaron like... Rodgers is he gonna help us today oh yeah that's right he's probably <laughs> recovering from that ass whooping or something I don't know <laughs> yeah. Yeah. oh well, look guys I always, we're gonna have to talk my fan the, the fans of the show would kill us if we don't ask you guys obviously about a lot of the stuff going on uh, I know Mike has covered ex ex extensively all the bullshit with Scream. Please said. don't ask us about the Supreme Court. No, not the Just Supreme don't do Court. It. Halloween, oh, okay. all all that shit. People <laughs> are obviously they want you to hear you guys' take on that. But before we get there, like like I said, I remember when I think of we watched a movie, I always think of the great classic days of YouTube. And you guys have seemingly kept this thing going. I mean, there had to have been some ups and downs where either one of you guys are like, I'm sick of this bullshit. I don't feel like doing this. Did you guys keep each other going throughout the years? I mean, uh, tell me about that. How did you, how did you guys seemingly just keep the train rolling? Um, a lot of alcohol and um, screaming. <laughs> really? <laughs> A lot of drunk fights. No, no. Honestly, we have. We we we've been there for each other in those times. Uh, early in the channel, um, when it was just getting going, because like 2018 is when anybody noticed or gave a shit, right? And that that ride was still fun going up to 2018. Don't get me wrong, but we started in 2012, and there's just nothing. You know, we're we're you know we're fighting pretty hard. We're putting out a lot of videos, we're having fun doing it, but um, you know, 2018 is the first time anybody noticed us, and we'd been doing these Halloween videos, um before and when halloween was when it was going to become a movie all of a sudden the channel started doing good but there's times when like up leading up to that point where we both went through some some pretty big personal adjustments and we're always going to be friends through all that shit like jay and i will always be friends no matter what uh and be there for each other but there was a time where i took a break where i was going through some crazy personal shit and i stopped um and for me to stop doing this because this is just like you know what i do uh, all day long obviously you've seen twitter um but like <laughs> for me to stop and have to like walk away for like two months um you know you know jay was cool and he waited and there's been times where, where jay had to take a break for a minute and uh yeah i, th I would say that we have been there like i th think we're the reason that that we're still doing this is is probably each other and all the the the
gay sex that we have in between shows. Uh, it's necessary. I think that's a requirement. That's I mean, good I, for bonding. I, I think that you're very mm-hmm. sweet, but I don't know what you're talking about, dude. We do every communication through lawyers and agents. I don't, I've not been in the same room with Mike <laughs> without, no. Yeah. It, you no, just wait until I tell Steve about this. He's going to be fucking pissed. Well, wait till <laughs> Roger finds out. This oh, is a Victor Roger. Miller and Sean Cunningham situation, yeah. actually, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. Which? No, Mike's, no, he's totally right. Uh, there's always been ups and downs, and there's been, uh, there's been times that you, you know, you're like, oh, well, you know, you put out a video and, and you put a lot of work into it and, and it does take time. It takes, you know, there's reshoots. There's like, you could fuck up. You didn't record. You got to redo it again. It's up to, you know, all that kind of stuff. You guys know, and um, you get frustrated. And then after a while, you're just like, and then you, if you put out, a, uh, you know, some content and it doesn't seem to get any traction or, you know, nobody looks like they give a shit. You just kind of like, Oh man, I don't know if like, fuck, I'll go back to CBS and do my shit, but you know, you just grind it out. You just stick with it. And that's, you know, and you got to have each other's back at the end of the day. Cause I mean, there's also been stuff that, you know, there's been, uh, uh, people come through the comments sometimes and, and, and they'll try to, uh, label us a certain way or, or say something that, you know, this or that, and you, you got to ignore that shit. Those are, those are people that are usually like 13 year olds that are like, jealous and they're like edge lords and they want to be fucking badass and once you once you see them in your mind like that you're like yeah okay. <laughs> like i'm good i'm putting weight into this guy <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. we get we get those yeah. two we get those two mm-hmm. i mean we'll have a specific guests on the podcast and people will go in the comments christian yeah. and and just say fuck that dude and we're like cool <laughs> sick <laughs> awesome you still Appreciate watched that. but <laughs> exactly yeah yeah they you gotta it's it's important to remember that too and i'm sure you know for you guys or anybody i always try to tell people this like when you get those comments like i got to there was a while where i would go through it i would literally just look for the bad ones i would just look for the fucking ones that called me fat or some shit i was like fuck you steve 89 you know (laughs) but like you gotta you gotta remember those are those are fucking kids probably or they're just people who are really angry with their lives you know and they're taking that and i've learned to actually go the other way with it instead of being mad at them i try to have compassion for them because if their life is going so poorly that they're gonna go because i watch people on the internet i'm like fuck this fucking asshole jesus christ that guy's a fucking twat you know biscuit but i i would never actually go out of my way to be like you're fucking terrible i hope you die so when you read that you got to remember if someone's that angry at what's going on in their life that they're going to say that to you you know, I actually have turned around to now at a point. I actually just feel bad for them, you know, but and then I still say, fuck you. But, you know, <laughs> I, I try to go with that at the end of the day. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, man, I'm really sorry that you're going through that, but you can go fuck yourself. But it's like, OK, yeah, <laughs> yeah. you hit both. Of them. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you guys had conversations about this in the beginning, too, with just like, God damn it. How do we get some traction? And to me, it seems like you guys almost t- tried to make yourselves laugh to just make the videos enjoyable for each other. Was it almost like, you know what? Fuck the audience. Let's just make this shit as entertaining for us as possible, especially with some of the commentaries. Like sometimes YouTube will actually be worth a shit and it'll recommend me these old videos y'all did like it's called like halloween six commentary via some old ass website i've never even heard of anymore you guys know what i'm talking about yeah like i remember those that. those kinds of they're great videos i mean you guys had to have been like to just fuck the fuck the audience we just got to make this shit entertaining for ourselves right that's mm-hmm. alcohol uh, mostly uh, it <laughs> makes you forget the audience is there for sure yeah uh, <laughs> but no like um we used to do this game when we were uh, kids, like me and Jay and his brother would be hanging out and like 20 years before YouTube or whatever, where we would do this game where it's like try to make each other laugh. So someone would sit in a chair and then we would take turns and you go in front of the person and you just do as much stupid shit as possible. And if they laugh, they lose. You know what I mean? So you're absolutely right. That's what we do. Like and it, it would get to a point where if someone was going to laugh, I would literally take my pants down and like speak with my asshole in your face. Like <laughs> we will do some gay shit to make you laugh. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know what I mean? But Pink like, eye everywhere. I did that shit too. <laughs> I, me and my brothers and shit. We did that shit too. So mm, yeah, don't worry. Uh, that, I think that's, that's, that's what Jay and I do. I know if me and Jay both in a commentary or something and we both started laughing and we both been cracking up at each other, that's when we're at our best, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's all, yeah, no, you're, you're absolutely right. I, I think there's, I, I, for, yeah, for the most part, it is like that. It's like, it's like, well, what, what do we think is funny? And like, well, I was like, that shit makes us laugh. I mean, we've done those Dr. Loomis, Michael Myers skits before when we're getting cracking up and just because we'll do something stupid. I'm like, this probably is not going to fly as far as it won't sell to maybe the, the people that are going to watch it. But I thought that shit was funny as fuck. Right. So, so yeah, 
So you're absolutely right. I think that you have to be that way either way to do anything on, on, on you know, to make a YouTube video. And I, I well, almost feel like the, the less you care and the more fun you decide to have, have you guys noticed that that seems like the, the, the faster your channel starts growing? Because that's always the, the, the second I stop giving a shit about views and subs and I just start having fun or making mm -hmm. myself, hey, relax. That's when the channel seems to grow. Has it been like that? Have you noticed it that way for you guys? as well or like when you focus on it, it almost seems like it's like like a snail's pace when you grow true you know mm -hmm. yeah i mean and it's weird when you when you when you have to edit i think we have some of our most fun in the live streams because there is no editing you know you go back and you edit something and you see something you don't like about yourself or you tell a bad joke or you get really you know weird about whatever but like live streams are the funnest time i have filming with us now because hey it's out there it's fucking gonna happen so you really just do cut back and you don't think about it and you have a good time uh when you have to edit it and you're thinking well fuck this guy's got this amazing editing quality and they've got all these videos in here and they're doing all this stuff you can really stifle yourself with all that but um yeah i think that the most fun i have doing the channel right now is when jay and i are cutting it loose during the live stream for sure which speaks to what you were saying yeah, well, and part of that, to that point, Christian, and, and to you guys, is really, like, there's there's something to be said about the synergy that the two of you guys have. Like, it, it's like, when you guys do your live streams and shit, like, it's the conversation. You can go for, like, three fucking hours sometimes because you guys are just bullshit. And I know how it is. Like, you'll get a couple beers, and you guys will just be bullshit, and you'll take, like, 15 piss breaks, and you don't even realize <laughs> how long you're going. And then you're like, fuck, man, like, we've got, like, God knows how many super chats to get to and all this shit. And it's like, all right, well, let's fucking wrap it up. Cause we, but it's like that, that shit sells. And I think that that is why you guys have grown the way you have, because like your guys' relationship clearly is very like natural. And like, it's very like people just like to sit and listen to the two of you fucking bullshit. Like, and Christian and I, with our commentaries, when we do a commentary on the podcast, we hardly talk about the movie that we're watching. We just, it's just complete bullshittery like it it makes no sense but people seem to dig that and i would say that you guys are the best at that it's just like i don't know when the two of you get in a room together or in a virtual room together it's just like man it's literally i told christian before we came on here before you guys came in i was like just letting you know i know you watch their shit but like dude you do not have to hold back these guys like <laughs> They, they literally, they just go. So like, don't worry about what you say. Like we tried when we first started the podcast to be a little more buttoned up. And then me and Christian were like, fuck that. Like, who cares if you don't like what we say, then, then fuck you. Like, I mean, it, it is what it is. So like, yeah, I just wanted to say you guys definitely have a natural chemistry there and it's just fucking hilarious. It's just entertaining. I appreciate that, man. I, and on, and honestly, I'll be the first person to tell you there's something about like, so like, so something that's, that's, that's going on with our channel recently is a lot of times where we live an hour apart, you know, um, and we've got all this stuff going on, you know, and, and we've been covering news of certain movies. It's hard to get together timely to get movie news out. So like I've been doing a lot of videos by myself and doing news videos and stuff like that. And still yet, I'll be the first person to tell you. I know what's special about we watched a movie. What's special about this channel is our friendship. You know, like I think anybody can come out and read a news story and make a news story and put it up or put some nice editing. You know, it, it takes it, it does take stuff like, you, you know, you have to be funny. You have to have uh, uh, whatever personality is needed for that. But there's always like a special thing um about anybody that's successful and i think mine and jay's thing is our friendship and that you know that is both of us and that is something that that is not you can't really create that in a lab you know what sure. i mean can't do it's it. just there yeah yeah <clears throat> so no, you guys strike me obviously you're modest guys but you're 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 smart enough to say look we've we're We've gotten successful with this channel now. I mean, when you go well, well over 100,000 subs, that's something, right? But you mentioned earlier, Mike, you said when the channel really started gaining traction around 2018. Now, again, I've been a viewer for a long time, but I never really paid attention to your sub count until maybe a year ago. And I said, what in the fuck happened to these guys? Like, they blew up. Where were you at around that time? Because I don't, I don't remember around what 2018. What year did you say? 2018 uh that was the year that that thing started to change for us it, it was it was i was um i was working full time and i just got a couple of promotions at work um so it was i kind of went through a struggle there um uh, where you know we had to be there for each other a little bit because i was going through a thing at work where they were having me work these crazy hours and that was right when the channel happened to finally hit and i think the, the reason for that was now you see like you see a thousand update channels and 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 more power to a man i i love the fact that 
and I could be wrong about this, but I, I feel like we helped create this genre of these Halloween updates and stuff sure. like that. I, I feel question. like you did. Pioneer. It's you did. safe to say that, right? Sure. Um, and I and I love that. I, I'm proud of that. You know, <laughs> objection hearsay. That's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Aquaman. Aquaman. Uh, but um, you know, I think that. Um, we were doing that before it was cool. So we got lucky in the sense that now we had a couple skits that, that were viral back when you could go viral on YouTube, you know, you can't now, you know, but we had a couple comedic Michael Myers video that, that got Halloween parody's got almost 6 million views right now. Doesn't it? Or broke 6 million. Yeah. 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 Uh, and, and you know, now you do one and it gets like, it gets less views than a, than a five minute Halloween update does. It's just the way YouTube and the algorithms change and the way it works. It sucks, but it's just the way the, you know, it's the market, you know, but um, that worked for us, but then we were doing these fun news videos together and we were talking about it. And when Halloween 2018 was announced, all of a sudden it seemed like a lot of people were paying attention and caring. And it started to look at maybe our goal was always to do this full time because we love doing it so much. And it started to be like, maybe we can do this. And then it became, um, then it became a stress you put on yourself. Cause you were like, if I don't do this right fucking now. It's never going to happen. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like we have to break through this barrier while we have this moment. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we did that, I feel like, but that, that was really stressful at the moment because I was sleeping like three, four hours a night working, coming back, doing the videos, trying to keep up to date with the trailer stuff going on. And it all worked out and, and it worked out great. And, um, I'm you know the happiest I've ever been in my life, but that was, you're right. 2018 was the moment that happened because you're doing what you love and nobody cares, but then all of a sudden what you love becomes popular and boom, like, you know, the Halloween 2018 pretty much changed everything for us. And again, do you remember about what your sub count was for during that time around 2018? Cause I want to give people a perspective of how, you know, sometimes channels just don't blow up. You guys had to grind to get to whatever that point was. I don't, I don't, I could not tell you. I know that we had our hundred thousand celebration around that time. I, was I, think I, I almost want to say it was around uh it could have been around the 70 75 mark i don't know it feels about around that and then it just blew up in that month like there was like it was like tons of people were subscribing in that one month but yeah it was a shock man it was it was amazing to see and i was like i wonder how many people after halloween 2018 are gonna be like nah fuck these guys i'm done now. <laughs> Well, oh, and, and that, I can unsub now. Yeah, I can unsub. Yeah. Now. I'm good. That brings up a question that I had for both of you guys because obviously, like, Halloween is my favorite series. It's like it, people get lumped into being a Halloween guy sometimes. Mm -hmm. And so I get it. But for you, did you guys ever feel pressure of, like, fuck, we want to branch out more, but like, are people going to not? give a shit like are these videos not going to hit because they're not halloween like does it ever worry you or where did you did you get to a point eventually because obviously you guys do it now but like was there trepidation ever to be like maybe we should stick to halloween because that's what seems to hit but like i don't know how'd that go yeah we've actually had conversations about that like legit had conversations about that because we know that we can we can do a video on halloween and you know it'll get people interested and they'll come and they'll they'll comment and they'll leave their you know they'll they'll be you know active in the chat and they'll and they'll but you know for and again halloween is an amazing series we love halloween but there's also a lot of other movies that we like and there's also a lot of other genres that we like but it feels like if um yeah but there is a lot yeah of course you put a halloween uh uh, review out of, of some kind but you're gonna run out of shit to talk about it at some point because you can cover only so much of halloween and then it's like well damn i covered fucking everything and now what am i gonna do so i just you know i'll just make up some shit <laughs> hey did you know that michael myers almost was a, a talking donkey they're like that's not true it's like prove me wrong find <laughs> no. on a reddit where it's not i don't know you know some bullshit like that but so yeah i mean uh but you know i've I, mean, I know that we've had conversations like that before because i mean we've you know we've done the michael and loomis characters which we love to do and that's really a fun thing to do and we've and we've incorporated that into doing you know like a halloween review with michael and loomis but then we've like well we want to do other characters too because we've got other characters that we want to try to you know use and, and branch out and play with and but we know that there's a possibility that that's not going to do anything and but yeah i mean definitely definitely conversations well, about mike that. you're you're dr chalice right yeah you're you're dan chalice uh yeah 
Uh, basically yeah. <laughs> which is basically just any drunk american like there's no like there's no like accent to it or anything like that you know it's just mm-hmm. a drunk guy who likes to hit on every girl that's uh, christian's <laughs> favorite halloween movie so you know that i tell you bad taste jay <laughs> what can i say that's <laughs> all right man don't worry about it we both wear a freddy's dead shirt too i'm such a piece <laughs> of shit God, <laughs> no that i cannot fucking forgive uh, yeah no. well the map says we're fucked <laughs> <laughs> Jay's right though, like that that the YouTube al- algorithm changed at one point, and it really did make shit hard. Like it made yeah. shit hard because no matter who you are and how much fun you want to have, and that, I do love Patreon. Patreon's fucking great, man, because Patreon and you know we do a monthly stream on there with just them, and we just cut loose, and it's not got anything to do with any news topic. It's not trying to get people to the door. It's just having a good fucking time, right. so we can really cut loose on Patreon. But like. You know, I miss the days of old YouTube where you could just throw out like, hey, here's a fucking Braveheart review. We love this movie and it didn't matter. And the way that they change things for the people who, who might not know is if your current audience, if you do a Halloween movie review and it's popular and then you do an action movie, you do a gladiator movie review and all these people subscribe because they like Halloween and then your gladiator review pops up in their feed if you look at it and don't click at it they bury it so it, it almost has clipped the wings of freedom on youtube sure. like you can't really feel out what you're at, at first you can if you're starting it's great figure out what your real niche is you know but once you've already gathered a group and once you've already you know had a little bit of success you were pretty much um in a cage uh and it, and, it, and it does suck it does suck so you have to get really creative and 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 at the end of the day it's still fucking awesome because you're talking about movies that you love but yeah it really does suck man the way youtube works now and the way their systems work as a business that you can't just talk about whatever the fuck you want that's another reason why i love live streams you know you can just do whatever and it's not going to matter as long as you get to the subject at hand yeah and i did it, there's proof of that too for me and christian i don't know what experiences you've had with it but i really wanted to talk about it follows like i wanted to revisit that movie because i fucking love that movie maybe it's just the aesthetic and the score that i love i don't fucking know but i did a video about it and like a couple hundred views in a couple of days i'm like oh what the fuck man and then i do a halloween five revisited and it's like oh yeah a thousand views in less than 24 hours i'm like what the fuck is this bullshit like mm-hmm. and i would get comments that people would be like oh dude i hadn't been seeing your shit youtube hadn't been showing me your shit and i'm like oh that's awesome yeah they really did fuck up like content creators they didn't help us at all they literally put us in a box and it's like this yeah. is your box this is what you're good at stay in this box and it's like yep. fuck you christian you just Christian just went through a rebranding. He was known as Christian Hannah horror for the longest time. And he changed it to planet CHH because he wanted to cover like action movies. And I shit, want to right? talk about lethal weapon and fucking, uh, fucking what's the, what, tra- anything. Charles Bronson. I want to do fucking death wish too. And talk about that amazing rape. <laughs> Get scene. on that. Uh, fuck yeah, yeah dude. <laughs> no, but yeah. like what Mike was saying is, is exactly right. You know, just for reference and it's not, it's a, it's my channel's humble, but like I usually do about a thousand 700 to a thousand, which is great. Right. And I want to talk about different stuff. And so my, my I love Return to Living Dead. It's my favorite movie in the, on the planet. So they made those two sequels in 2005 that went straight to TV, Necropolis and Rave to the Grave. They're, they're bad movies. But I, I disguised these reviews as the making ofs and what the hell happened. Why did these movies come out so poorly? And people were interested, and they both did really good. For me, they were in the 2000s, which was just a blessing because I put a lot of work in those videos, but I disguised it. I mean, I wanted to tell the story of why it became a shit show. What happened to those movies? And people were interested in that. So what Mike is saying is totally true. You can't just do a, uh, like you said, you can't just Braveheart review anymore because it sucks. Like what what happened to Braveheart? What what make your title a headline instead of a instead of just a, a title? And it's like. Uh, I've been figuring that out myself. So it like, sucks, man. It's uh, I literally wanted to review Collateral one day, and I was like, no one's nobody's gonna, gonna watch. It's gonna tank our shit. So I was like, hey, Collateral's kind of like Halloween Kills. It's Tom Cruise's slasher movie, everybody. And like, <laughs> I even had to put fucking Michael Myers in the thumbnail. And I was like, why Collateral is a Halloween Kills type slasher? That did well, not the good news all over YouTube's fucking eyes. They got like two thousand views. Well, we done. wanted to, we wanted to do a. a you know, we've we have constantly defended Zack Snyder as like our guy. We love the DCE. Like I, I like Zack Snyder's DC universe. I do like it. I know there's problems with it, and I know people don't like it. But we've talked about that before. We want to do that. But you know, the good news is we can disguise that now because Ezra Miller's life is a real life horror show. <laughs> so at the same time, we could use it as horror and therefore exactly. get that that bend in. 
I yeah. like that. But yeah, you're yeah. Man. Speaking of DC, Jay, has Mike seen the light yet and admitted that the Batman is the best Batman movie? Has Mike no, come around to that? I, yet? I, don't, I don't know what's going on with that. I just feel like there's okay. a lot of drug, drug. Oh, hold on, time out. Because I, yeah. I, Mike, is the best Batman Michael Keaton's 89? I don't know. We just, we just did no, a ranking. Well, I, I flip, I flip flop on this. Like I do, I flip flop. Uh, I can't remember exactly what was my number one. It was close. It was one, two, or three for sure. But, but I will say that the Batman is probably the fifth bat best Batman movie, not and I love it. Low. I you know, love it. All right, I'll tell you guys this. I'm really not into these movies that much, but everybody told me, Christian, this is the Batman movie for you. It's dark. It's ominous. It's cool. You'll really like it. I liked it, but. Jay, I'm never going to watch that motherfucker again. It's too goddamn long. Don't tell me you've got the time to rewatch the three hour movie. Jay. I do, sir, because I loved it. <laughs> I liked it too, but I mean, Jesus I wanna, Christ. I have the time. You know what? I liked it the best because, you know, I think, it, I think what it did was it represented, um, for me anyway, I feel like the character, um, uh, you know what what the tragedy or the trauma is of bruce wayne is the fact early on in his life and again this is getting really far out of light where i know i'm getting into geek zone but okay just bear with me for a second Go in the early man. part in the early part of bruce wayne um or, or or his career as batman he felt more comfortable in the identity of batman and i feel like uh he didn't understand or or uh, or have any kind of desire to be bruce wayne at all like that that identity was so far removed from where he was comfortable in being this uh, this vengeance come to life, which was the Batman. I feel like they nailed that. By the way, I think that Commissioner Gordon in this is the perfect Commissioner Gordon. What I like, and also I love the aesthetic. I love the Gotham City actually becomes a character in the story. What I uh, equate it to for me is that it felt like um, something like there was. A, a, a dark top to end but there was like a little light hope at the end it was like the crow like the crow was a very much the same aesthetic i felt like when i was watching it and i i just feel like robert pattinson took something and and, and brought to life a, the, the character of batman that i had always wanted to see on screen i'm not saying that christian bell didn't do a great job other than you know his asthmatic voice and he's obviously smoked 16 packs a day but <laughs> yeah uh and, and i'm not saying that. michael keaton obviously michael keaton is is the godfather and will always be the godfather of batman but for me personally, um, I, I just feel like that movie represents like the 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 inner struggle and the turmoil and and the whole movie itself as a whole represents the the darkness that was consuming his life. And then at the end of the movie, it actually comes full circle and you see the tiny drop of hope. Now, I know it's getting very poetic here and I feel like I'm going to drop some Sherlock Holmes shit or, or, or Shakespearean shit. <laughs> Sherlock Holmes, of course, but out um, on the bearded barley. Yeah, can someone please play the cure burn? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's uh but that's how I feel. But I know I understand. Like I, I definitely think that there was moments in it that was stretched out, and I do think that they did stretch some things out. And I also think they gave away some really good moments of the movie in the trailers. I feel like they fucked that up. Uh, I would not have revealed that one, you know, where he's like, I'm vengeance, because everybody already they're like, okay, where well, we get I would have held back a lot of stuff, but I feel like Overall, I, I just think it's an amazing movie, man. I, I don't know. But I get your point. I, I It is a little long. And I I literally filmed today. Like, I like I did a, a film. I didn't put it out yet, but, like, ranking every movie I've seen this year. By the way, do you guys know how many movies you've seen this year? Do you guys have, no. like, a letterbox to recount it? No. Okay, no. so I'm just a fucking nerd. Okay. No. Uh, but, like, I did a <laughs> – I'm always scared. Now, I did it, and I was like – I've seen 34 movies this year, and I was like, I wonder if that's normal or if that's fucking weird or, like, not enough. I don't know. But I'm just curious. So I've been asking everybody that. But, no, it was my third favorite movie this year. Um, Doctor Batman Stranger was number one. <laughs> ten. And it was ten. Uh, I know. But, like, I, it was an 8.5 out of 10 for me. I loved it. I thought it was great. It was my third favorite movie of the year. And – but when I said that, it wasn't – a fucking 10 it wasn't the greatest everybody's like <laughs> fuck you man yeah <laughs> no it was it was so funny to watch their live stream because they did a really long live stream about like just like all the batman movies basically and like it was so funny because mike had to keep reiterating like guys i fucking loved this movie but like <laughs> i you know like i still hold this one and maybe this one above it but i fucking love this movie and jay's just like nah, you're fucking wrong dude and here's why you're wrong this was like the greatest batman movie and it was just it was hysterical because it's also kind of crazy if you if we can admit it batman there i think there's more hits than misses with all those batman movies so like mm -hmm. it's kind of fucking hard to rank them like it really is that's like true. it's it not like some some it's my no, go ahead. I was just... Batman, 
Oh no, sorry. I, I was saying, it's my fifth favorite Batman movie, and to me, that's not a bad thing because a lot of Batman movies, Batman movies, fucking you know, rule. So I don't think that's a bad yeah. thing. Well, I, well, you know, it goes back to your point, and it is true. Um, well, Mike was having to constantly say, "I like the movie." You know, you constantly have to tell people, like, "Look, guys, I'm not shitting on the movie. I do like the movie, but I have problems with it." Just like uh, we don't necessarily agree with every MCU decision. Like sometimes, or, it, or yeah, well, sometimes uh, Marvel puts out some shitty turds, and and people act like, oh no, those don't exist. I'm like, are you serious? Did you walk in the bathroom after they were in there? They left a turd. <laughs> shitty the turds. Is a what shitty you know. turd. Yeah, like, that's like that's the extra diarrhea on top of the turd that's floating on the toilet. Oh, but uh, you know, so I mean, it's like yeah, Marvel can do bad, but we're not saying that the MCU sucks and the DCEU is superior. But it feels like sometimes when we talk about Zack Snyder, they're like, oh, you guys are. Or Zack Snyder fanboys, or your DC fanboys. It's like, dude, I used to read Marvel constantly. I was a Marvel fanboy for like ever until I got older, and then I was like, yeah, I like DC a little bit better, but not because you know I, I don't. I think MCU does good stuff, but yeah, you constantly have to. You always run into that. They're like, oh, if you don't agree with the mass majority, then you're an asshole, and then you're just being a prick on purpose. And no matter what anybody says, I don't care what you're a fan of personally, but the the MCU is a lot more formulaic than DC mm. is. And that's just a fucking fact. Like they have yeah. they have a formula and they stick to it and it works most of the time. But I, I've always respected the DC for at least taking more chances and being exactly. different, um, mm -hmm. you know, so I agree with and you guys there. They're both broken in their own ways. Like DC's a fucking shit show, but at least sometimes you get something random that's like beautiful, you know. Um, and that's like kind of like, like Ezra Miller being a kidnapper. Yeah, the oh, Flash. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'd always. I'd Ezra always like Miller that. is the scariest thing that you could wake up to in America today, and that's saying a lot. If you yeah, wake up is. and Ezra yeah. Miller standing over your bed. You are shitting your pants. Because like that is. I, if you tell me I was here, I'll, I'll fucking, I'll fucking kill you. <laughs> I, I <laughs> think I saw it. Please stop. I, I think I saw a tweet. Like it was a meme, and I don't know if it was real, but it was like technically, like if you're in Hawaii, you have a greater chance of being attacked by Ezra Miller than being struck by lightning. <laughs> and like that's yeah, I, I fucking that. scary. Right. Or even a shark. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, fuck, man. But right. yeah, well, no, we could. So I guess. Christian, I know you you had mentioned there was a couple topics you wanted to talk touch yeah, on, yeah. and I, I we gotta touch this one first, I think, because Mike just made a video about this today, and he's been on like the daily updates about it. Let me let me before because yeah, okay. that's gonna okay. get. Okay. I know I, okay. Mike's gonna go on a rant about the scream stuff, and I can't wait. But <laughs> let let me because this is let me ask you guys something, and I, I'm you both may have a different answer. What meant the most to you? A hundred subs, a thousand subs, ten thousand subs, or a hundred thousand? Which one do you remember saying, holy shit, we did it? It's a great question, dude. Dude, it was like I think it was like 50 subs, dude. Maybe maybe it was less <laughs> than that. But I remember I was like, I was at Walmart with my ex-wife and I was walking around and Mike was like, Hey dude, we got maybe it might have been less. He's like, dude, it might have been 50 or 25 subs was, or something. It was 41. 41. It was, 41. It, was, yeah, yeah. it was it was right there. It was something like that. And I was like, yeah, man, that's fucking crazy. We've done it. Yeah. Like, I never, I, <laughs> I mean, I, I saw Richard Pryor Sunset Strip, but I never thought, I never thought. And then Mike was like, uh, yeah, they're asking, we should give them names like Whamonites. What do you, what, do you, what, what should we call them or something? I was like, I don't know, man. It's just, it's just so Whammers. much. Oh, Whammers. Yeah, yeah, I was walking around. I'm like, people going to recognize me and shit? Like, no, it was. <laughs> It was, yeah, it was it was a low ass number, and I was like, man, that's. But yeah, look, dude, uh, for me anyway, fucking two, three subs. It's cool that somebody's gonna take their time to subscribe to your channel and then want to find out what what you're talking about, you know, uh, throughout the right. week. I think that's cool. But yeah, yeah. that's yeah. it was it was probably about forty. Yeah, you're probably right, forty one. Mike, uh, you guys asking these questions bring brings back a lot of memories, and and uh, it literally is. I think the number is like forty one or forty two, like Jay said. Like I remember that exact moment. I remember I was sitting at my mom's house, like house sitting for them or something, and I think it was like around the time. Now this this I'm, I'm getting other times confused with other times, but I remember seeing like forty two, and like forty two is a fucking solid looking number. You know, it's just like a that's a decent size goddamn that's number a, right that's there. That's a like, fullbacks number right there. Yeah, 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 exactly, <laughs> exactly. Uh, but like, yeah, that was like, oh damn, like this is growing, and then you you. you you start to get that itch. You're like, we have a thing. And at that time in my life, I was like always searching for my thing. You know, I was like, we're going to these $10 an hour jobs. Nothing wrong with that. You know, supporting your family, doing all this stuff. And, you know, 20, 2012, we started, my, my daughter was three when, you know, when we started this and I still had no path. I hadn't figured it out what I want to do. And I always knew like, 
I have a lot of work ethic in me. Like I want to fight for something, but I want to fight for something that I believe in. And college didn't work out for me. This didn't work out. Um, this seems like it's going to be a way longer answer than you were asking for. I'm loving but it. Keep going. I am, you know, <laughs> when we found this channel and it was like around, around that time when you find this thing, it's like, this is something that's ours that we can build that we don't fucking have to answer to anybody. So if I have to eat people's shit for the next 10 years, I'm fucking happy to do so. And then eventually I will free myself from this cage. Uh, and you know, uh, maybe if I'm lucky, yeah, Jay shook and his head. No down there. I saw that. He doesn't want to eat. shit. Anymore. I'm not going to eat shit. <laughs> I've seen humans. Shitty, <laughs> shitty turds. Shitty turds. <laughs> not doing that. <laughs> it's terrible. Uh, but you know, you get to that point. Like, yeah. And like I said, 41 was a big deal. Um, but this is, when we started filming we were filming on a 60 dollar bought from kmart underwater camera that was meant for like people on their vacations it was like, yeah fucking sharp. yeah or you know what's a underwater animal uh look at dolphin. Dolphin. a mammal <laughs> uh, yeah dolphin thank you dolphin that's what i was going for yeah look at fucking dolphin and it looked like shit and it was fucking ass and it was terrible but like um you know, we got to this. We were so broke. I remember I borrowed my sister's camera, and she got mad at me. And wanted wanted it back, and I'm like, "You don't understand. Comic Con's coming up. We have 11 subscribers. We need to fucking give these people the news. And you're taking the camera. From me we're right getting now. ready to go. Yeah, I can't afford another camera. You know, there was years was where crazy. I lived in a place in the country that didn't have a fucking internet, and would drive every single video. Would drive to to, to my sister's house and sit on her porch while they were having family dinner, and like upload videos. Like, you know, um, the, that the whole grind and like the once you find that you get joy out of building what you're doing and it's yours and you you have faith in it to some amount, like it changes your fucking life, man. You know, yeah. uh, and again, that goes back to YouTube sucking uh, the life out of people with their fucking algorithm. But yeah, 42 to answer your question 17 minutes ago. And, you know, I'm glad you said that because like you got to you guys got to know somebody right now is watching this video wanting to make a YouTube channel. And they look at a guy, a couple guys like you, and they say, well, these guys have done it like and they've been successful for a while. What can they tell me? But I mean, the YouTube landscape, like you said, it's changed. Mm -hmm. I mean, what do you what do you got? Because you I, I, Jay make it faxes. I don't know. He's not on the Internet. But Mike, you probably get messages all the time. Hey, man, I want to do YouTube. I want to do like what? What we what do you and you can't read them all, but like what what would if for those people listen, what do you tell them? Like, what do you because I don't know. What do you tell these kids nowadays? it's it's hard because everybody just wants to and and i understand that like you see somebody do something and you like it right and your first response is i want to do what they're doing so you try to do the exact same thing that they're doing and right. i feel like that is it could work for a while you guys know you could put out a scream update video right now and it might do really fucking well you know what i mean just just by having the title you might your cousin greg might have heard something at the piggly wiggly and you break some fucking news and it might do okay but like is that going to sustain you you know what i mean like a, right. like a few hundred views two thousand views today if they're just coming there because you're giving them news, you're not a journalist. You're not going to be able to continue to break that news for them. So you you end up getting addicted to that and you end up lying about it or you end up making up shit. And then you just put yourself in a bad situation. You feel bad about yourself and you're not doing something productive or happy for people. So my, my advice is always do the smallest possible niche you can to get started. You know, do try to do something that nobody's doing. And, and try to do something you're good at. You don't have to be good at YouTube. You could be good at writing. You could be good at podcasting. You could be good at YouTube. Just try your thing and don't promote it. And don't promote it right away. Wait until you watch something or you read something that you wrote or you listen to something that you said and you go, that's it. That's it. I'm proud of that. That's good. Do whatever you got to do to get the money for the equipment. You need to do it. Make it the best you can make it and then start promoting yourself um and just you know do something that you love because if you're just doing something for views or whatever it's never gonna hold um this whole thing started because we fucking love hanging out together and we love talking about movies and we love growing this this thing so yeah just it, it, make sure it's something you love and you're not chasing the views because like i said when we were doing the halloween videos nobody gave a shit all of a sudden the world turns and halloween's popular halloween was not popular in the current landscape of youtube until 2000 uh what well, was originally it was halloween returns was announced right right and then it was halloween 2018 um but and we were just happened to be in the front of the driver's seat for that but dude some of my favorite videos you guys did were when you guys were going over those scripts of halloween movies that never got made halloween 3d oh, halloween really returns yeah, yeah i mean and first of all the halloween 3d script is unintentionally fucking hilarious and i'm kind of glad that movie never got made um, but Halloween Returns had some good shit in it. And I remember both of you guys being like, dude, I would have liked to see that. Yeah, I remember that too. 
and, and, and just to add on what Mike was saying about that too, I think yeah. the main thing is for for people is uh, let go of this idea of instant gratification. Uh, you're, you're, it's not going to be an overnight success. I mean, there's a lot of people that say, I'm going to buy a mic, a halfway decent mic. I can turn the camera on. And then I've got for, you know, my family tells me a charming personality and I'm just <laughs> going to be an overnight success. That's not always the case. I mean, and right. the main thing also is make sure that you pick something that you're passionate about. Just don't pick the thing that's popular. Like, you know, there's a lot of things that you can easily gravitate to and be like, well, if I put videos up about this, it's popular. And then I can grab an audience real quick and, 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 you know, jump on this bandwagon that's going around and maybe earn myself a couple hundred thousand subscribers. And, you know, all of a sudden I'm, uh, you know, whatever. And I'm not saying there are like, I mean, and again, I'm not going to, I don't want to name, I'm not going to name the YouTube channels, but I like the recent thing for me, um, I was watching, uh, you know, I, I did watch the, the Amber Heard Johnny Depp trial, right? There was a shit fucking ton of law crime network things that popped up where people were covering the trial and these guys some of these guys weren't even in that field at all that were covering and now all of a sudden they're goddamn court tv <laughs> you know and they're fucking like they're they're breaking down in the inside scoop i talked to the guy across the street and he sells ice cream and he told me that amber heard picked her butt before she went into the courthouse <laughs> and that's gonna be an effect and i'm like dude like i understand what you're doing because it's easy to get onto that but at the same time it's like i know you're not passionate about that that what you got to know is when it's all gone you know when when that's over where are you at what are you doing and and she might have picked her butt because no one uh, said did. whether or not she wiped after she shit on the bed. Listen, no one I said. Know she stepped on a bee. She stepped on a bee, man. And there was a lot yeah. of heavy things going on. And like that thing that they said that, that was coke that she snorted up her nose. It's probably her just smelling her own butt. But yes. either way, yeah. But we I mean, all that, do that. Exactly, man. Everybody loves but, their own brand. She just got caught on camera. Fuck her. I mean, right? But no, at the end of the day, I, I, I would say just be passionate about what you want to do. Make sure that you're, there's something in your mind when you want to make your YouTube channel, that that's what you want to do. And just forget about the idea that it's going to be instant. It's yeah. never going to be a snap of the fingers, and it's going to be overnight. So and, yeah. to piggyback one tiny thing on that, I was just thinking about this just now. Like, I think if you look at it as – if you look at it as I need this to be successful in two months – um, it's not going to happen. I think if you look at it and you go into something like this or podcasting or writing or YouTube or, and it doesn't even have to be that shit. Like for me, if you feel the need to grow, you could go, if you can if, go get a job at, at, at a, at a fucking department store and be like, I'm going to fucking take this. I'm going to own it. And I'm going to be area manager making fucking way more than we'll ever make on this channel, you know, mm -hmm. covering whatever or, or do as a general manager. And I'm going to be happy. Um, but I've always said at the, at the end of the day, like, um, for me, if you look at it and you go, it's going to take me, there's a fruit fly on my face. There's going to take me 10 years. If you can look at it and say, it's going to take me 10 years to be the point where I can quit my job and you can accept that, that you're going to eat shit, sleep less, be made fun of for what you're doing, uh, have bosses tell you you're not putting enough in at work, uh, sneak into do reply to comments while you're at work um, doing all this shit um, for nothing for 10 years. And you can look at yourself in the mirror and be okay with that. Then you're on the right path. Cause you really love what you do. God, but if you're, you're like, I'm going to do this to be there in two months, you're in the wrong business. It's not going to yeah. happen. Unless you're doing TikTok now, TikTok. If you want to get hit big quick, go do TikTok. Just, just you learn how to dance. There. Yeah. Learn how to dance yeah. and just fucking yeah. dance. And That's there it. you go. Yeah. 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 But not YouTube, not anymore. And no, so I, we don't want to take up too much of you guys' time, but really quick, before I ask you guys about the landscape of Halloween and Scream right now, you know, Mike, I'm looking behind you, man. I feel like I'm at family video. What happened here? Does that a, did you buy the shelf from the store or something? This is a great time in my life. I am shitting you not. We went to, I took my girls to, was it like Lawrenceburg or Frankfurt or some shit like that? What You guys don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. It was like an hour away from here. I live in Ohio, and, so I am familiar with it. Yes. Not yeah. so far oh. away. Family yeah. video kept the dream going strong, you know, they did. Uh, for a while. Like there was multiple locations, but we went to one. And I just wanted to take the girls. I have two little girls and I wanted to take them. I wanted to show them. <laughs> we go in there. It's like this dingy carpet. that smells like cigarette smoke. And I'm like, this is what life used to be like. <laughs> and they're like, great. Can we fucking, can I have some candy and then we can get the hell out of here? Like I can order this movie on Netflix, you know, but I wanted to show them what it was like. And we go in there and they're like, we're closing. I'm like, oh, fuck. I'm like, so how much y'all want for the movie shelves? Thinking they're going to give me some ridiculous price. And they're like $10 a movie shelf what? Um, for one of these. Nice. 10 bucks for one of these things, right? And then the, nice. the signs and shit was like $5, $10, or whatever. We rent and rented a fucking U-Haul. And I bought six of them shit. I remember that. Yeah. That's gorgeous. I mean, look at that. That's what a gorgeous. Day. 
And I already had the VHS tape. So what a beautiful day. I'm not shitting you. My wife, we set it up. We went all the way. We got it. It was snowing. We, we set it all up. It was a big day. I was all sweaty. I'm going to be honest with you guys. And this is kind of embarrassing to admit. I may have. She went to the, she's like, I'm going to go shower. You got your dorky movie set up. I hope, I hope you fucking like it. And I may have sat here and shed a tear just staring at it. Just You're because it was like, I have a piece of everything I've ever wanted in my life in my fucking house right now. It's like the greatest thing ever. So. Yeah, that's embarrassing, but I, no, I said no, it out loud. Nothing channel. to be embarrassed about there, but I'm going to say right now, Mike, I don't know about you guys, but I thought that was going somewhere else when he said, you know, this might be embarrassing. And but uh, and it, he started with the SH, and I thought he was going to say, I sharded. Like, I sat in this chair, and I just fucking sharded. I didn't feel like going to the bathroom, so like, I could yeah. still look at it. She, so was, she was in the shower, so I just fucking sharded. I like, pushed out a yeah. shitty turn. I mean, a little juice came out, but no big deal. I mean, I shit my she pants. wasn't around <laughs> that day. That's gorgeous. Look at that big ass Halloween pumpkin up there. You got a scream mask. I see some nightmare on Elm Street VHS oh, tapes. Yeah. I mean, what what else do you need? I know it's great. Yeah. I, and and by the way, I have five yeah, of these yeah. fucking things in my garage, taking up half of my garage, and I have no place to put them. But I was just like, it's ten dollars. I want all of them. Just give them to me. And <laughs> yeah. Now they're just, just smell wasting them. life in my garage. If you guys want one, if you come up here sometime, just let me know. I'll throw you one. Yeah, just take it. Well, uh, we're going to Scarefest because uh, it's close nice. to me since I'm in Ohio. Christian's in Louisiana, but he's making the track all the way from Louisiana to Scarefest. So yeah, I know you guys are there yeah. sometimes. Are you guys going this year? Probably. I think so. Probably. I can't wait. If they do, I can't wait to say, Mike, how you doing? Who the fuck are you? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'll remember you got. Of course we will. No, yeah, I think we should be there. Like we had a booth for the first time this past year and they asked us to come back. That's amazing. Um, we should be at Scarefest this year for sure. But if not, you guys will be in our next. You know what's list. hilarious dude, is the fact that we had a booth and I remember um I was <laughs> I was like uh, like trolling around. Well, not trolling, but I, I guess I was I was like uh <laughs> like redditing. I was on Reddit and uh, <laughs> and I just happened to type in our name and they're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, oh, yeah, bro. He's like, Scarefest, uh, uh, Wham's going to be there. And then I, I I saw the first one and I was like, I'm not going to fucking respond. And they're like, yeah, Mike and Jay's going to be at Scarefest. And somebody was like, yeah, they're probably fucking drunk before they got there. <laughs> like, how did you fucking know, bro? Like, I mean, I, I was like, uh, yeah, it was just hilarious. But yeah, it'd be cool if you guys come. I mean, I think that we'll probably wind up being there. I mean, that we don't, uh, I mean, what else? I'll see do? how much y'all charge and I'll decide. <laughs> yeah, I oh, we're <laughs> no, it's well, funny as fuck, dude. We 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 had like we signed a bunch of pictures and like sat them there, like you know, uh, and we're sitting there, and someone would come up and go like they had no idea what the fuck we were. They'd be like, "Hey, uh, how much are those?" And we'd be like, "They're free." And they'd be like, uh, "Yeah, dude, yeah, I'm good. I don't want one." <laughs> <laughs> no, like you know, it was literally it was literally people asking us because we had uh, the Christopher Nelson uh, Halloween. Uh, you know that he was nice enough to redo for us. That was the in the mannequin behind us. They're like, I just want to take a picture of Michael. <laughs> and then I was like, so I was like, so I was like, so you just want us to move? And they're like, yeah. <laughs> we, we thought we thought they wanted a picture with us, so we're yeah. like. And they're oh, like, that's cool, Can you man. Guys get out of the fucking picture. Like, oh, I was like, Jake, Jake, Dude, they want us out of the, the picture. The worst, that was the worst one because Mike had already like talked to him and they were already around the other side of the table. And I was like, all right, so how are we going to do this? And they're like, Mike's like, oh, dude, they don't want to fucking take a picture with us. I was like, that's what I said. <laughs> I knew that. God, yeah, it was, it was crazy, but it was, a, it was a fun time, a really I cool did. event, though. That's cool. I just hear the office theme playing behind all these funny situations you guys mm. have. Like somebody walks up with a banner that says, "We watched a movie." Uh, so what do you guys do? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 No, it's it's oh. funny too because um, that's actually um, Piz Owl's neck of the woods too. He's another titan of industry when it comes to the horror. Uh, we've we've had Piz on the show many times, and you know, friends with Piz, and so he's going to be there too. So it's just this whole fucking smattering of a bunch of sweaty nerds that are going to be there so yeah, be too shy to tell each other hello and yeah, we'll yeah it'll be... each other afterwards like sorry dude it's just... so hot <laughs> <laughs> no if you guys come so we we normally do a meetup uh afterwards like after Scarefest, we like have a meetup and and the people who do come there to see us we'll we'll go to dinner and we'll go karaoke and it's awesome. a shit show we've decided this year to separate the beat up um and from the scare fest so this time we'll just be at the scare fest and we don't have the meetup and stuff going on so if if you guys are there and we're there we will definitely have a brewski or seven together if you'd like to. awesome that sounds, sounds like i love it it'll be a cool time yeah. so like oh, that yeah. guy said yeah we will absolutely be drunk before we were there <laughs> that's Good. funny well congratulations oh, yeah. on that yeah well deserved man. yeah that's hell yeah guys be, 
that's got to be pretty fucking cool to be asked to go have a booth at a convention. I mean, that's something no, we had to beg for it. I, I suck several people's dicks, uh, and then <laughs> I watched it. I watched even it. better. <laughs> <laughs> were you in the corner, Jay, with they the pillow over your head? Yeah, no, they, I had it <laughs> going on, uh, you know, under the trousers, but I watched him. I didn't do it. They wanted Jay to be the one, but I said, like, I know, but I was like, he won't do it, but he'll watch. And they're like, All I right. got you, bro. I'll, I'll suck this. Thanks, man. I'll tag me in. I'm doing this for you. Big. Tag me in, though. <laughs> oh jesus well let's start i want jay to start with this one jay what the hell is going on with halloween and did you like these last two movies and what do you think is this next one gonna be and all that kind of stuff because people got to hear you guys talk about this so they'll be mad at me i mean uh, look i always thought that jason should stay in crystal lake <laughs> yes yes <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, no, no, uh, you no. Know, uh, look, uh, no, I did. I, I actually, I, I thought Halloween 2018 was really well done, I, and I did enjoy it a lot. I think that it, you know, um, that it, it brought back a certain type of menacing and, and and mystique to Michael Myers that had been sorely missing for quite a while. And and I did like that they went back to the roots uh, in in a lot of ways with Halloween 2018. Halloween Kills. I know it's got its problems, but I but it show it did show the viciousness of Michael. Um, I think that you saw a, a, a side of Michael that a lot of fans have wanted to see since. I mean, for me personally, I, the, the most vicious I've seen Michael is the the uh, operating room scene in um, Curse of Michael Myers when he just goes fucking ape shit. I mean, that's some of the coolest ever shots of Michael I've ever seen. Like it's it just pure brutal and, 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 and just over the top. And I loved it. Um, so I thought the Halloween kills established that and they did a really good job with that. And um I mean, again, I mean, I know there's problem. And also, uh, let's start the, the flashback scene in Halloween Kills was incredible. It was so yeah. well done. It was so well done. And it was classy. Uh, and so with Halloween ends, um, I, I've heard, you know, I know that there there's a possibility that the fans could leave disappointed. I, I've heard this. I've heard people saying, like, well, there's going to be shockers here and there. I, what, I, what I want to have happen in Halloween ends, and I, and I feel like this is the appropriate end, with Jamie Lee Curtis returning back with Halloween 2018, I feel ultimately what should happen is that Jamie Lee Curtis should go out fighting Michael Myers in very much the same way as um, uh, Van Helsing would go out fighting Dracula. And I and I hope that there's this big tumultuous ultimate scene between the two. And then um, they have this epic fight and she dies because I feel like we've we've explored that character enough and it's time to move on now, but that she tries to take down Michael Myers, which is her boogeyman since the seventies. I mean, fuck, let it go lady. But anyway, <laughs> get over it. But no, it's, you know, and then obviously uh, move on to, uh, and if you want to, you could even, you could even, I'm not saying they would, but you, you could pass the torch on a little bit to Allison um, and, and, and start from there if you wanted to. I know I, I'm sure they're not going to do that because Blumhouse, this is their trilogy. Um, so yeah, I, I I'm, uh, that's what I think that should happen in Halloween ends, but I'm always nervous with these type of movies when they come out because there has been rumors that, you know, Jamie Lee Curtis has come out and said before, oh, it's going to piss fans off. This is going to piss people off. I'm like, I don't fucking know what's happening. Just tell me what I want to hear. It's going to be an awesome fucking movie, and that's all I care about. But. Yeah, I mean, how can it piss anybody off? Michael's clearly going to survive because he's going to be the only one that yes. wears a mask and everyone else didn't want to wear a mask in the town, <laughs> yes. so they all died. And that's just what's going to fucking happen. We all know that. Yeah. But Mike, I mean, same question to you, Mike. And I know you guys, if I correct me if I'm wrong, I think you guys both prefer kills to 2018. Am I oh, no. wrong? There? I like 2018. I like 2018. Oh, I damn. Like yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, Christian kills. and I, we prefer kills over 2018. But I did too. We, no, bad so taste. Do I. So oh, I. hell yeah. Three over one, we bitch. Two. We yeah, win. No, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. We do. <laughs> no, I, I think that, um, well, first off, I'll tell you one thing. Uh, and I thought that this this rumor was put to bed, but um, apparently has not been because I've been getting more and more comments about it. Michael Myers, look me in my, look me in my fucking face right now. Look does it. not die in the first 15 minutes of the movie. I can promise you that. Like, no, I know no. that. that <laughs> Did someone not... say that? <laughs> yeah, that's been yes. a rumor that started, and then everybody's ran with it. That does not happen in the movie. I heard he's not even in it. Uh, <laughs> there was a rumor that the people were saying he was going to be dead from fucking oh COVID God. off screen. Oh, my someone God. Someone tried yeah. to start that rumor. I'm like, oh, fuck a... me. I think what will happen is you will have to wait for Michael in this movie. Uh, I think that, I think that you're going to have to... 
I think you're gonna have to wait a little before you see Michael in the movie. And <laughs> I think it's gonna build up tensions and it could upset people. They are gonna do if you listen to the people in the know, like they're gonna do something weird. It's gonna be weird, it's gonna be strange. Um it's definitely going to be divisive. Um, but I mean, fucking dude, what's not divisive these days? Thor 4 is divisive. So I don't really know what that means. What I do know is that up to this point in Halloween 2018 and Halloween Kills, they've done one thing right. To me, it's almost inarguable. Michael's been fucking rad. The mask is good. James Shoot Courtney's done a great job. The kills have been good. Despite how you feel about the story around it, Michael's been cool. Sure. And that's yeah. not something to be taken for granted because look at all this. Look at all the previous sequels. Like, how many times do they fuck up Mike's mask? How many times do they have tuck him your fucking around? mask in, bro? Yeah, tuck your fucking mask in, bro. How many times was he walking <laughs> around like he had hockey pads <laughs> on, like all bumbly, fumbly, and shit like that? And even some of the best movies in the franchise, they have gotten Michael right. So I feel like when Michael finally does show up in this movie, they will still get him right. Um, but whatever they do, it's going to be divisive. I just hope. I think my hopes and dreams for this movie are just that um, it's fuck. I'm having a hard time with this. It now. has Michael. I don't in know. It. it has Michael Myers. Yeah. In it. No, <laughs> I just hope it's not anything too goddamn crazy. Like I'm fine with a little bit of weirdness. Cause we've seen a hundred Michael Myers movies more like, you know, 12, 12 or 13 or whatever. But like, I just want a, a solid movie with a solid ending because we know David Gordon Green's not coming back. We know for now Blumhouse isn't coming back. It has a solid ending. Just please don't fucking make it a, a goddamn copycat killer. Please don't transfer Michael's soul to another person. Please don't have it be Allison as the killer like they did in Halloween mm -hmm. 4 at the end. I would like a, a, a solid ending to the Michael Myers, Jamie Lee Curtis, Laurie Strode story. In that story, in a solid way, close that chapter forever, and then in a couple of years, we can move on with new characters, or uh, do whatever you want to do. But this should absolutely be the. It's not going to close the book on Michael, but I think it should close the book in a beautiful way on Jamie Lee Curtis, on Laurie Strode, and if they do that in a, in an honorable way, I'll be happy. Yeah, and there's there's two things to that. One, Mike, as I saw you say on Twitter, I think it was yesterday or today, and everybody's been hearing this now. Unless some asshole leaks the trailer early, you will not be on vacation when it comes out. Oh, so that's man. good. You know, dude, you will be home. Oh, yeah. But they could leak it like they leaked fucking kills and then you could get fucked over again. We thought for sure that this trailer was going to be in fucking mother fucking June. Right. We thought the it was going to be in June. I thought it was going to be the black phone with the black phone. Yeah. Two vacations this month. Two vacations. I'll be gone for the 15th, 16th, and 17th in case anybody wants to rob my house. There you have that information now. Congratulations. Uh, and then also um, the last week of um, – I'm leaving the 30th of, of July. So they will drop the trailer. Um, you can expect that – you heard it here first. The Halloween trailer will come out on the 15th, 16th, or 17th while I'm on vacation because <laughs> Halloween 2018 and Halloween Kills both dropped while I was on vacation and Jason Blum, that piece of shit is waiting for me to leave this state before he drops it again. We didn't watch a movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And also yeah. Um, we should all come to terms with, I've talked to Christian about this. I've heard you guys hypothesize about it in videos. We know they're going to give us some kind of explanation for Michael. I mean, what that explanation is, how far they go with it, who the fuck knows, but how do we feel about the fact that, I mean, look, it's going to happen. They're going to give us some kind of explanation. And, I kind of don't want it or need it, but it's inevitable. I think at this point, so like it will happen. I mean, you... We will have sex in your car again. <laughs> <laughs> like, like oh. for, for real though. Like the the radio tower shit. Like everyone's talking about the fucking radio tower shit. I mean, what are your guys' thoughts on an explanation for Michael? Like, leave it the I fuck alone. It. Yeah, I don't want it. I, I'd rather yeah. keep it vague. I think that's that's what makes uh, Michael Meyer charming. I, I I think there's something about Michael Myers specifically that makes him a truly unique character. Is the fact that he doesn't need a motivation. There's no rhyme or reason to why he does what he does. And the fact that he doesn't have those things is what truly makes him a terrifying presence. And one of the most iconic of the horror villains that are out there. I mean, I, I, I don't, I don't, I, it's, it's so weird to me. It's like, there's always a director that's like, Oh dude, we got to explain. We got to explain. What's he all about? Like, dude, fuck you. Like we don't just make, he's a fucking monster, dude. He's a, he's, he's a, a killer shark. Mask. Yeah, and because there's always like there's a girl. Yeah, he's a killer shark. There's always girls like, oh, I do him though. I think he's misunderstood though. I'm like, no, bitch, 
it kill you. <laughs> this guy is a fucking monster. Like he's not supposed to be explained. That's what makes him terrifying to me. Um, if you want to say that, you know, there was, you know, if you want to go the Loomis route and maybe there was a, like a human element to him at some point, you can play with that, I guess. And then something changed, something changed. I mean, Loomis always calls him uh, purely and simply evil for a reason. You know, it's the <clears throat> vagueness. It's, it's the, uh, it's, it's the fact that you don't know. I mean, this is what evil is. And I, I, don't, I, I feel like, it, I feel like explaining that it just takes away the, the, the mystique of the character on you know i just i don't think it works i agree and i think at the end of halloween returns the script that was never made michael at the end of it goes and paints on the wall in his own blood this town something along the lines of i'm paraphrasing here this town will never be safe again mm -hmm. and it sets up michael to not be chasing Lori, to not be chasing waterfalls but to be chasing the town of haddonfield he wants mm -hmm. all of them dead and you don't know why um what i would love to see in this film is for and they've hinted at it a little bit they've told Lori like he wasn't ever after you sartain dropped him off there he wasn't actually going for you he doesn't care about you i think it would be a very interesting twist for Lori to be like and maybe that's what, what they're trying to say with trauma and all like michael actually doesn't give a fuck about her she was just he wanted to kill her that night and then he moved on to some fresher fish like and then i would love to leave it off as he just wants everybody fucking dead and there's no reason why, and we don't know what happened, but you're all in fucking trouble. This dude's body's missing. You're hearing breathing again, and it ends. Like, I don't even need Michael to die. I don't need that story. I just need Lori to know that he's not fucking after her. So go to the Bahamas he's and coming, live your fucking life. And you're all out of lube. So yeah. you better oh, yeah. fight That's the true. fucking pillow. Because you're getting I mean, raw. Mm -hmm. No, I, I, style. I agree, guys, but I will say I have been partial to i want to see her go after him because kills basically made it to where it's like dude he doesn't give a fuck about you old lady and like i feel like that's not gonna <laughs> that's sit right with Lori, yeah. and she's like well, fuck you and i want to see yeah. her go after him like, they already I, did that movie like though mm -hmm. did they though but, yeah that's exactly what she pitched for halloween h2o and i know and no he I, came for you her. guys will you guys will hate me i fucking want him to be an alien I want him to oh, be Jesus the most. Christ. I'm serious. I I am not a hollow. I love Halloween, but I am not a, a. I'm not like Nick. I'm not as hardcore as Nick. I am the girl on that meme where the house is on fire and she's smiling. I want the movie to be so fucking crazy that everybody loses their fucking shit. <laughs> That's why so, you like H two. Yeah. Yeah. But I do too. So it's like <laughs> you had I mean, your fucking day in the sun. All right? I like it. Yeah, I like it when they get no. weird. So you I shut the you know. fuck up and take it. No. Some yeah. men just like to watch the world burn. <laughs> yes. <Right? laughs> yeah. I get it. No, I get it. No, but okay. So let me, let me ask you guys this. You know, like 10 years ago, yeah, about 10 years ago, I think is a fair statement. This new screen movie would just come out, right? And we wouldn't be hearing all this. He said, she said, crap. Is Nev in the movie? Is she not in the movie? I mean, what the hell do you guys think about this shit nowadays? I mean, is it too much? Yeah, man, I, I miss it. I, I really miss the old ways of movie making. Like, I remember sitting in a theater and seeing the Batman Begins trailer come on and being like, oh, my God, this is a Batman movie. Holy fuck. We're getting a Batman movie. This is awesome, you know? And I miss that. I really do. And I think that we live in a time where... I want to say this the right way because I, I, I really don't want to shit on anybody, but I, I, I really hate, like, I hate the scoops. Like I, I hate the whole scoop mentality that we have. Cause I know everybody's excited to get new news and we make updates on it when it's, when it's common news to everybody and somebody else puts it out there, we make updates on it because everybody's already talking about, we might as well give our opinion. Sure. But there's so many things that sometimes somebody will tell us that we know about. And just because we don't want to ruin it for fans, we don't say anything, you know? And, and then I'll watch a video two months after I knew about something and it'll come out. And I'm like, oh, man, I really wish you would have let the fans experience that in the trailer or in the movie. But it's just the world that we live in, you know, and with the Nev thing, I've gotten to the point where I feel stupid because it's like you make a video and it's like it's happening. It's not happening. It's happening. It's not happening. And it's not that you don't trust the sources. It's not that you don't trust the people that are coming to you and telling you that because you appreciate that they take the time to message you and trust you with the information. Uh, it's just it sucks that I like the idea that we all do this because we like to talk about movies and news and, sh and share our excitement about movies. I hate that it's become this. We're trying to be newsbreakers thing. 
You know, like we're trying to be the ones who break the news. I I, I don't like that. I, I I really don't. And I think that's what's caused this. But as far as Nev and all that stuff goes, who knows, dude? It could be anything. It really could be. She may be back in the movie. She may not be back in the movie. I'm of the opinion that I want her to be in the movie under the guise of what they've said she's going to be in the movie as. Because to me, that that leaves the door open that it would be perfect for if Scream 7 comes out and it's Stu that's been running this whole thing. Now, that's just me. I want Stu fucking back. I think and we Nev, want the same thing. So you're yeah, good, man. Nev coming back leaves that door open, right? So I think that would be perfect. But at the same time, if she's not in the movie at all, cool. Scream has gotten to a point where Nev Campbell, Sydney Prescott's been through so much. If she gets to go live her life in the sunset, I think that's perfect for her character. And I think this new cast was so good that they could carry it into the future and we can get 10, 20 more fucking screen movies out of it. Um, so I'm cool with whatever they decide to do. And I just can't wait to see it in the theater. I just really hate that it's become this whole Spider Man. Is Andrew Garfield returning? Is there going to be a cameo? Like, I just want to go see a fucking good screen movie, you know? I was going to mention that, Mike. Your hesitation is well warranted. You guys remember, we literally got a fucking 4K video of Andrew Garfield on the set and we were still like, I don't know though. Like, what if this yeah. is a deep fake? Like, we can never be too sure. But it's like these scoopers are just trying to fucking spoon feed us at this point. Like, no, we'll give you whatever you want. It's it's real. It's happening. And even then, we're like, but but is it? And unfortunately, I think we're coming to grips with the fact that the times are fucking different. Like, yeah, it probably is true. Like these fucking assholes. There's assholes in high places that want to ruin it for a lot of people. And it's like, yeah, cool, man. Thanks. But I mean, Jay, your thoughts? <laughs> like, your thoughts on all that? Yeah, I mean, I, no, I agree about the scoopers. I mean, it's like everybody became Jake Gyllenhaal from Nightcrawler. It's like, <laughs> it's great like, movie. Great shit movie. up, and then yes. and I, I, I got to be there to film it and then fucking report on it. Uh, I don't know. I like, you know, look for Scream for me. Um, <clears throat> I'm not a huge Scream fan. I never was. I, I, I like Scream One. I, I love Scream One. I think that Scream One is the Nirvana of the horror films. I, I do. I think that Scream One reset um horror in a way that it needed to be reset and i think that at that point before scream had come out <clears throat> a lot of it was stagnant so scream was uh exactly what the horror community and the industry needed it needed an injection of new blood it needed some new ideas and and they did that and scream 2 was good too the follow-ups for me i never liked them the thing is when they said that neff campbell wasn't coming back i i was like yeah you know I, i'm good <laughs> Like, I don't care. I liked Scream 5. I actually did like Scream 5. And a lot of people thought I was going to shit on it, that I was going to hate it. I didn't like. No, I thought it was a solid, well-produced, good movie. And I actually did enjoy the characters that were in the movie. Um, for me personally, I don't I, I don't personally think they need any type of the, the original cast to continue the legacy of Scream on. I, I think that they can move on without um, Nev Campbell and... Uh, without uh, Courtney Cox and, and, and the other cast, the original cast. And of course, everybody likes to come back and see those guys. And those, those are the, the torch bearers for scream. But at the same time, I mean, I think that scream has got enough popularity to continue on without them. Now, the thing is, um, I do think they, they, you know, this for me, I, I think Stu's dead. And I know that everybody like wants Stu back, but I know it. And I, I know that we've Mike and I've had like arguments about this and shit, but this guy had a, a goddamn boom box type, a huge TV dropped on his fucking head. A CRT I, for the CRT for the like old people out there. Exactly. <laughs> a giant old ass TV that used to play like Mario 64 on this. And it was plugged in. He was electrocuted and shot. I don't know if this dude's going to come back like Jigsaw from Punisher. He could, but I, I just, I, I don't, I don't really see it in the cards, but um, yeah, I, I, but I, I I always had this idea, and I swear, like the, the, because the hardest thing about Scream is how do you, how do you put it where it's gonna like what's something new, what's something meta that you're gonna do that you've not seen before, you know, with Scream, uh, because it's always gonna be like for me, M Night Shyamalan type of movie, like it's always gotta be that something that you're like, oh my god, I've never, I've never thought about that before. I had this idea a long time ago, and I know it will never happen, but like the idea that uh, if they ever rebooted Scream. Uh, instead of like, what if they used uh, the the murders of if it was all one shared universe? What if they used the murders of Haddonfield like it was an actual real event and it actually had occurred? And Michael Myers, this thing was real, and this guy was locked up, and 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 that had happened. And these killers, 
had decided to uh, be, that was the inspiration they had used that as a as a and they had made movies based on that they were using that as an inspiration to become the new killers and reboot scream in that way like make it meta because they're talking about halloween but in their universe it's real but they made movies based on it in there you know what i'm saying it gets confusing as shit but i don't know I, um for me personally if neff campbell comes back that's cool if she doesn't come back i think it's i i think it's high time for me it's the same thing with jamie lee curtis like she's been in the she's been in five movies like jamie lee curtis is you know she's she's you know been the the awesome uh actress that she is and she's come back and paid her dues and the halloween ends is gonna be her last hurrah i think that i would have i would have personally sent off neff campbell um in in the uh, the heroin way in in scream five i would have i would have been like you know what let's just move on with a new cast but I don't know as far as like you know i know that the you know her not getting paid enough and that there's a, like a lot of pissiness going on about i don't feel like i was given the i don't know man that's that's all personal shit that shouldn't have been out there but it is what it is the the perfect yeah. place to leave sydney's character was i mean probably scream three when she was completely mm -hmm. at ease and at peace with her life and then if you want to come back and do scream four ten years later just <sighs> don't have sydney but they brought sydney back so now they've muddied the waters where it's like well we brought her back twice now already after that perfect ending she had in three because say what you want about scream three it is my least favorite as well but the ending is really tied up nicely mm -hmm. so but yes mike i am also on board with you about stew and you know what i'm just gonna say jay if mike is right about his stew theories no one's ever gonna hear the end of it I'm just, I'm Mike. <laughs> I'm gonna, I mean, you I, are way through the streets like Paul correct. fucking Revere. I swear to yes. God, I will. Yeah. And you should, you fucking should, <laughs> especially if you get it down to the, like, because Mike has this theory, Christian, that whoever killed Dewey, that wasn't Amber. That was not Amber. He thinks that was Stu. And he did a video breaking down how, look, that, that bitch is not the right size to physicality. Like, none of that shit lines up and he's right even if it doesn't end up being Stu, because obviously it was a fucking stunt person like wearing the suit so it's clearly not amber <laughs> but yeah. like dude i mean it'd be fucking awesome and i would love the video like mike would just make a fucking video with the thumbnail of him like flicking people off and like, <laughs> yeah, fucking, it. like it would just be great yeah I'm, I'm i'm down for whatever i'm like jay i'm not really a big scream fan i i, I kind of fuck with nick i call her no personality nev because oh, you know, she's so goddamn. <laughs> I mean, Mike, meet me halfway. You said you used to watch a bunch of Canadians talking about those Canadians are hit and miss. Some of them are like Jim Carrey, and the other ones are just like, hey, don't you know it's cold outside, eh? I mean, she's one of those for God's sakes. I can't, God, I can't, yeah. you know. I, I'll say this I think that, like, I think that for me, I only need Never Round if it's going to turn into this two thing. And by the way, if you guys want to, if you guys want to jump in on this, I'm, I'm considering holding a live stream where. Uh, I'm going to go to a gymnasium and I'm going to let someone drop one of those fucking tube TVs on my head just so I can yes. prove to you people that you can survive it. Hey, I mean, better I'm go quite, viral. I'm, <laughs> that yeah, would, I'm, and that's called Faces of Death Part 8. And Jay would do it. <laughs> he would drop the TV on my head. He'd be I the would. one to just drop it. Yeah. Like, uh, no, that's how much I I'm believe. I'm not going to jail for Mike murder. would have like permanent fucking brain damage. Uh, would, and he'd be yeah, like yeah. infertile and all this shit. But he'd be like, it fucking worked. Like I told I you told I lived. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, dude. He's going to Give me some fucking mashed potatoes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, he'd I get would. up like a guy that was just knocked up on Mike Tyson. Be like, see, it didn't hurt. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> brains I'm like fine. It. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, you know, I think that there's there's places you can go. And look, I mean, when Scream 5 came out, I think we all had these crazy ideas that it's radio silence. They're so innovative. They're such good directors. They're going to do something wild and crazy. They're going to flip everything on its head. And they really force awakens it. They just took it. They reiterated what was good about it and they repackaged it and made a solid Scream movie. But people were very disappointed by the reveal. They thought it was um, they thought it was obvious what was going to happen when it was Richie and Amber and all that. And that there wasn't enough surprises in it. I think now is the time um, to throw in those surprises. And yeah, I think it would be fucking wild if the rumors are true and Nev is, just has a cameo in six. And that just leads to seven where Stu has been running this thing the entire time. And the only reason nobody, because the biggest plot hole for Stu, right, is that no one's, if he's still alive, why has nobody mentioned him? Um, I fucking have movies. said that on my channel so many times. They literally made yeah. a point in Scream 5 to talk about how Billy is dead, but they never say Stu is fucking dead. Never. And that's important too. And then and then when you have that, when they're looking at that little iPad thing in the bottom corner of it, it says, is the real Stu Mocker still alive? I mean, they're yes. basically telling you there's hope, right? They said he's dead though. <laughs> <laughs> they're fucking lying. <laughs> and so many people do. 
That yeah, was a zenith, right. for God's sakes. He's I, dead. I, but listen, <laughs> those are built well. Like I, I don't, I, I don't know. I mean, you guys, uh, you know, uh, some of your listeners, uh, they understand, and you said it right, Christian. Uh, CRT, like uh, CRT TVs, like these That's were a mule, dude. They were fucking huge. These things at least weighed on average, like even the thirty-two inch was like a forty fucking pound giant ass anchor. And I've got it, one like, still. You're right. Yeah, dude. dude. And it was like it was on a fucking dresser. Or, or some shit like it was on a shelf and it fell on his fucking head plugged in after he'd been shot in the gut and it electrocuted his fucking face you can't <laughs> you can hear him you can hear him dying and then they're like but i know but like for, for for Stu fans i hope he comes back but if this guy comes back like listen this guy is gonna be like my name uh, i am sam he, he, like he is not gonna be interested in fucking like murdering anybody like, the entire time they warm. The entire time that Jay's making his point, I'm just watching Mike and he's just shaking it, nodding his head, like, yeah, but let me tell you why you're wrong. My insides are dying. <laughs> Wait till I'm I just think about it. My head. Hey, 50 <laughs> Cent was shot nine goddamn times. He we're fucking like, was. Man, in the club rules. Like, yeah. yeah, like we're good with it. You know, but and Tupac that, was shot less than that and he died. So, I mean, it, it, that's, <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> that's that's fair. <laughs> but also at the same time, it's like, uh, you also have to look. Kevin Williamson was going to bring Stu back for for scream three before the columbine thing happened that was already in the plans like so if the writer says he lived you gotta assume he lived and then when it comes to scream four and jill uh she gets the fucking the the bumpers or whatever the fuck you call them i don't know the yeah the fibrillator yeah to fibrillator. the goddamn temples and she gets shot right here and wes craven said it himself i shot her there because i wanted the chance for her to still come back so if you can survive that to the brain and get survive getting shot there that's about as believable as taking a few fucking stabs to the gut and then having a tv drop well head, you right? know mike the original ending of scream four they actually cgi'd that she got shot in the head and then in oh. post, they CGI'd it to her chest because yep. they wanted to bring her back. She was initially yep. shot in the fucking dome. Like, oh, it was yeah, going to be, like, no chance. And then Wes Craven was like, well, no, I would like to bring her back. And we can explain away a gunshot wound to the fucking heart and defibrillator paddles to the brain, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, sure. We, if we, Yeah, you're right. If, if that's the logic we're going off of, they could explain, Stu. He might be handicap like he, he just might be physically and mentally from surviving that but he could still be there you know rolling around fucking who knows man exactly and <laughs> professor my x that, that shit my, <laughs> my whole thing is the reason that nobody knows that he's dead is because his parents look at that house that was a beautiful fucking house they came from money right mm -hmm. so if they came from that much money maybe they didn't want their son to go to jail for murder so they faked his death my whole deep crazy fucking like deep dark internet thing is that those kids when they left the party drunk and they almost hit dewey to go see the principal who was hung on the gold post that they got in a wreck one of them was burnt to a crisp that the sheriff who was friends with Stu's family helped him get the body out of there try to make it seem like you know he didn't do it or not that he didn't do it but that he was dead they faked his death switched the records with the kid who died in the wreck and then the whole time stu has been back and he's not not only is Stu still alive but he's been the one who's been feeding shit to roman been feeding shit to to uh um uh Mickey been feeding shit to them. He's actually choreographed this entire thing and tried to make her life a living hell because he he's just fucking psycho and he wants to pay them back. Now, this is a huge goddamn stretch. I understand that. It's a huge stretch, but this is just how my mind can come up with it. And I feel like if my dumb ass can come up with it, these goddamn movie writers can come up with some way to keep his ass alive, right? Yeah, sure. and aside from all the rumors, man, like one thing we can't deny is it's been well documented that there was in these contract negotiations – there was a big part for Sydney in Scream 7. Everybody knew that. It was like we kept hearing the reporting that it was essential to her for her to be in this movie or they were going to have to rewrite two movies, essentially, like the arc of these two movies. I was told that by somebody that that's, that's what they told too. me. Like, yes. Yeah, so I, that says something co connected to the beginning of all this. It just does. I mean, hey, I Jay. don't know. Mm -hmm. Would you be would it be worth it to bring him back if there's a scene where Dewey reveals himself? That's his name, right? Is it is is Matthew Lillard Dewey? I'm sorry. No, Stu. 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 Sorry. Fuck fuck Dewey. <laughs> Stu. Yeah. Would it be worth it if there's a scene where Stu gets revealed, he gets knocked down, and they push a TCL Roku TV flat screen on his head <laughs> and he gets up like bitch this ain't shit you hey, feel man. me on it you feel no, me it would be I dude I I would laugh my ass off if he's revealed and then they push that TV on his head and he actually fucking dies and they jump on <laughs> like another another TV falls on he's like just to make sure though 
<laughs> they push another one on him. Yeah, well, you know, it's weird for me is um, and I I I, I do like listen, I, I think Scream has definitely has has its place in the legacy four. Um, but for me, I, I've always felt like this, and I know it's not true, but it always felt like with Scream One, it was gonna be one of those movies that was a really unique, powerful, awesome movie, and it really did give the horror industry the boost it needed. But it was wrapped up so beautifully and it was done so perfectly and so well that there really wasn't a need for sequels. I mean, I, you know, I'm saying and I you could say that about Halloween. You could say that about a lot of the horror movies that had come out. But I felt like when they did sequels to it, I I, I understood se- uh, like Scream 2 with the Jerry O'Connell and 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 I never know her. Jackie from Roseanne. And Jackie. Was the, yeah. yeah, Jackie from Roseanne. I don't <laughs> Debbie know her Salt. name. Debbie Salt. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I thought I was like I, I appreciated that, but I was like, man, after a while, scream, it's scream like is real because he's not a supernatural killer. I mean, you could do the copycat thing forever, technically, but I don't know, man. <laughs> Bringing Stu back, I feel like you're you're bending a lot of shit. It's like the Strangers for me. It was like the Strangers one. Like uh, I, I saw that, and then I was like, how that fucking guy like move out of the doorway like at flash speed? There's one scene specifically when the guy like. Uh, 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 the, the main guy in the movie, uh, what's his name? Uh, Old potato mask head. Sackhead guy. No, not Sackhead. Uh, the the one of the survivors. Uh, the the uh, uh, Scott the main Speed dude. dude. Yeah, Scott Speed. Yeah, that wasn't. Yeah, that guy. Uh, he like shoots a shotgun, and this guy like magically uh goes out of the doorway frame. I'm like that's what the fuck is that? Like that guy's not supernatural, but I feel like Strangers um was one of those type of movies too. Is like they tried to put a little bit more supernatural spin on it. You know, and it felt like that in some instances. And I feel mm-hmm. like Scream is they're doing the same kind of thing. I'm just saying, I feel like Scream 1 was the was the best, and it didn't really need a sequel. It got a sequel. It was awesome. And then we got Scream 3. And I know that you like that, sir. <laughs> Wasn't she like uh, a customer service I don't like no, 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 Scream no, no. or something at yeah, the beginning of the goddamn crisis. movie? She was a crisis. Yeah. 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 Customer service, whatever. And they, like got rid of, they got rid of, of the one Scream of, 3. But that yeah, is well, they got, they got rid of Cotton. Uh, so early i like that guy lives forever we never saw him die either cotton could still be alive we never saw that i like that's the crazy thing about scream three it's got a great opening and it's got a great ending but i feel like a lot in the middle is just kind of like but like it opens awesome and ends awesome it's like there was a great movie in there but kevin williamson wasn't there i guess that's the takeaway right and Scott yeah. Stapp did a great job with the soundtrack with Wyatt. Oh, yeah. fuck yeah don't even get us started on Creed, man hell yeah yeah yes Oh, but I, I I don't know. At the end of the day, I, I think that Neff Campbell's had her time in the sun, and I I think that if she doesn't come back, um, I don't I don't think the I don't think the movie will suffer necessarily. But yeah. dude, Creed Creed was in Halloween and in Scream. <laughs> Scott Stapp, man, like this yeah. guy's H H2O well. H two O, yeah. What's this um, liar for? Yeah. <laughs> Hell Hell yeah. yeah. You know, one of Basically my favorite a Scream movie at the end of the day, really. Yeah, H2O one of my it, it, yes, it is. And one of my favorite videos ever is, you know, from whatever fucking Thanksgiving Dallas Cowboys game that was in the early oh, 2000s, yeah. late 90s, uh, where you got Scott, the fucking people uh, flying like angels while Creed's fucking playing. We're the whole squad. <laughs> it's so awesome. Yeah, the last thing I want to say about Scream real quick, guys. I know, Mike, you put you put up a video about this today. I mean, this is just fucking insanity to me. So Sean Clark represents her i didn't know this which means sean clark makes a killing every time that broad goes to a convention there's no (laughs) doubt about it but he says he talks to the woman hey she says she's not doing the goddamn movie guys but uh, there's a lot of people on twitter these 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 people that say no she fucking is like what the fuck is going on mike i mean jesus christ what do you think about this crap so there's a little story there so for me at least in my personal life like Today I was filming, uh, I was ranking 33 movies and doing this thing. So I had this Nightmare on Elm Street video that came out today and I was editing it and I got that done and I could have put it. So I, then I filmed this thing and I filmed it 45 minutes long video ranking these 33 movies. And then I get done with it and I realized, oh, my fucking mic cut off halfway through. So I had to film the whole goddamn thing again. Right about then I noticed that the story came out that he said that um, she had texted him. It's bullshit. Um, it's what she said, that- right? Yeah, she said it was absolute bullshit that she was still in the movie. So and I think, I mean, if, if she's now he manages her at the conventions or whatever, you know, he does the um, I can't think of the name of his uh, of his company at, at, off the top of my head, but he manages her convention appearances. And what he said, all stars, I think. Yeah, 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 that's it. Uh, and he had messaged her and said, hey, I just want to make sure because this ties into our business. Uh, are you going to be able to make this convention? And her response to him uh, from what he says was the rumors are absolute bullshit. 
uh, those two words, uh, absolute bullshit. It's on the thing with two heads podcast, which is a great I listened podcast. to it today. Oh, fabulous. Love Chris yeah. Nelson. Yeah. Chris Nelson's a yeah. fucking dude. He's a gym of a guy like, you know, and then so like, so I was like, okay, well, let me make this video real quick. Make that video. Get done. Refilm the 45-minute video all over again. And then I get done with that. I get the other one uploaded. And I notice I go on Twitter and people are doubling down. She's They're in the goddamn doubling, movie. Tripling down. <laughs> yes. And I'm getting messages on Twitter from people that are in the know and stuff. They're like, no, no. Yeah, this, it's this a lot a of them. Screen. It's actually happening. And I feel like, to be honest, I feel like most of us have the exact same fucking source like i mean like it's like one person telling everybody fucking everything and we all viewer viewer anon and critical overlord <laughs> and uh, like yeah. what and I, I thought it was do trust me bro now <laughs> yeah him too yeah. <laughs> well, to do be trust fair, me bro viewer yeah. anon i don't know uh from my ass to my elbow like but he has a great track record right? i took him to task uh, today mike and i just want to say i dm'd him and we dm back and forth and i said if sean we've had sean on the show sean is a friend of the show i've had sean on my channel love sean clark he's a great dude i don't think that he is being dishonest i think the thing here is nev is being dishonest intentionally because that's the point of this to mislead and i think what she said to him was just to cover her own ass but viewer anon i was like look dude i know sean i consider sean a friend I'm conflicted right now. What's going on? And he was like, dude, she's clearly lying to him. He's not lying to you guys. That's what he was told. But he's like, unless all of my sources that have been right for years and years are just suddenly fucking wrong, she's in the movie. And he even has the dates that she's scheduled scheduled to shoot. So like, yeah, but don't you think she would tell him like, Hey, just tell people it's not fucking true. No, I mean, that's... Sean has a platform. He knows he's going to, she would know he's going to get asked about it. That's why There's, I'm saying she would tell people, hey, look, I, I'm, I'm doing this shit. I'm doing this convention. We're working. It, it tell be, people it, it, I said it's bullshit. I would oh, think yeah, Sean's yeah. lying. That's what I I don't think well, she okay, would lie I to Sean. I think I, I think saying. she said, Sean, tell them it's bullshit. That's what or, I think. If it's true or maybe it is fucking bullshit. <laughs> you know or, what I mean? I don't know. Or scream five. And this, I'm just playing devil's advocate here. I'm not saying anybody's lying. I'm not saying anything. Like I said, I I, I trust and and love and, and and love and like the people who are who message me and we talk about movies and they're in the know and stuff. Like I'm not trying to shit on anybody, you know. But there's a chance that I think we all have to realize that Scream is a meta fucking franchise. And what is more prevalent in the society of movie news and stuff like that than leaks and spoilers and scoops disguised as spoilers. Right. What would be more meta of a killer reveal than to tie all this into people just can't wait for the real fucking thing. Why can't people, why do people have to ruin everything for everybody? However, they wanted to write that into the story. Brilliant. If you're on screen five and you're running shit and you are literally the puppet master of this shit and you can go to somebody and leak something because you want it leaked because it ties into your fucking movie and you could do that in a simple second maybe some of these scoopers aren't lying maybe some of their sources aren't lying but maybe if you're in charge of scream five if i'm in charge of scream five i'm gonna start leaking fake shit all over the fucking they place. do this in the wrestling business they do right. this in the, that's exactly what they do in the wrestling business so and i'm not saying this is what's happening but i'm just saying if i was in charge of scream <clears> five i would start leaking a bunch of fucking bullshit now it's not smart it's not smart to leak the stuff about nev because there's such this fight with us and the sexism concerns and like all the stuff and like right. the fans are mad very very scary sketchy game they'd be playing if they were doing this but i do think there's a chance that these people are leaking fake shit on purpose and that none of these scoopers are being dishonest or lying or making up shit but maybe it's just what they're being told you know i don't know or maybe you're well, right <clears throat> and it's fucking happening who the hell knows well, if, if yeah. you look at if you look at more recent stuff i mean uh how many times did uh you mcgregor lie about how like, i'm not an obi-wan i'm not gonna reprise my <laughs> i mean he lied for a fucking year and a half for andrew straight. garfield yeah. andrew garfield and Tobey mcguire they lied for a year and a half straight because why it's a contractual agreement if they broke that shit they ass sued <laughs> they know better than to, than to uh like say i'm in the movie if you're asked a point blank question on like conan o'brien or or whatever and they're like are you in this movie your best option to be like no nah, dog i don't know what the fuck that is <laughs> like, not like, just it, that it, i mean jay to your point you're, you're you, that is actually like super relevant but like you also got to think 
if this was really a conversation about money and Nev wanted more money, I would assume she's also then not going to fuck with Paramount and Spyglass's money if it's in her yes. contract and not say anything. If they bit the bullet and said, fine, we'll pay you what you want, but if you fuck this up, we're going to sue the fuck out of you. Exactly, she's not going to yeah. slip up. She's not going to yeah. slip at all. Like, I don't know. But I will say to Mike and Jay, you guys are obviously hardcore Halloween fans. Um, mm -hmm. Can we just say that... Um, we are no longer the ones that can get dunked on right now because right now the internet has solely become toxicity in the Scream fan base and not as a whole. I love the Scream movies, but there is a very fucking vehemently like angry and vitriolic portion of that fan base. And like everyone always dunked on us Halloween fans like, oh, God, you fucking Halloween fans are going to come for me if I say something bad about Halloween 2018 <laughs> or Halloween kills. I'm just going to say, guys, we are no longer on the front lines. It's the Scream fans that are on the fire. So <laughs> I feel really good for us. <laughs> like, and then, yeah. then you got a guy who was arrested. There's a dude who's one of the leakers of this was somebody who was arrested on the set who's proud of it, who wants to uh, uh, seems like he wants to tear down the screen movies and got upset and i don't even want to touch on that because god knows what dark hole that leads down but like there is weird shit afoot at the circle k you know what i mean like there's strange things happening with scream right now and i don't know if it's good because it's like do we, i mean I, I i really personally i prefer the, the lead up to scream five when everybody's like yay we're getting a scream movie this is awesome and now it's like mm -hmm. There's people who fucking hate it, Scream Five, and there's people who now hate Paramount, and there there's sexism, and then there's the uh, the Sydneys or the the and it's like we're the oh, but I, I mean, missed uh, the old days. What was the sexism thing about? Well, they I said I, I really don't know. Tom don't Cruise know. got paid, or well, Tom Cruise is not going to be you know told no, or he's not going to get shit money, which I'm sure Tom Cruise gets most of his money on the box office, which is why he yeah. refused to release Top Gun on <laughs> streaming. But yeah. you know, people don't. Uh, some people don't even put that in consideration. So they just say, oh, I bet Paramount negotiated with Tom fucking Cruise for his Top Gun movie. But, uh, you know, they're not going to pay Nev yeah. Campbell. First of all, Tom I'm Cruise. sorry. Stop fucking comparing <laughs> Nev Campbell to Tom fucking it's Cruise. A, yeah, the last Netflix, standing yeah. action movie. Like, last Dude, standing true movie yes. star. Box office sensation in the world. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. For God's sakes. But, I mean, you know how it is. You know how it is. I yeah, mean, I, I wouldn't I, have to get paid money, too. She didn't get paid a lot of money. Say fuck you, Paramount. But I cannot understand how people would think this could all be a ruse, especially for Paramount, to make themselves look like such fucking assholes. Mm -hmm. And when, like, which studio would want themselves to look like assholes? For I, mean, exactly I don't, I don't understand it. I don't understand that, the whole thing. In well, the yeah, I, in the fact. Used, no, go ahead. No, I was just say absolute bullshit. Like, if she's throwing a ruse, you would think she'd be like, "I'll be at the dates," or like, "No, not yeah. really." But like the words absolute bullshit tells me she's still pissed and she doesn't want people saying she's in the movie unless, of course, everybody's in on it. And then who the hell knows? It's yeah, I was going to say, Mike, wouldn't it be the cherry on fucking top of this shit Sunday if uh, we found out that that whole leaked contract negotiation fallout was all bullshit just to stir the fan base up? Like, Not what if... What if this was all a ruse? What if she's been involved the entire fucking time and they wanted to gauge the interest of the fans? It's possible, dude. Like, it's I mean, fucking and possible. Yes. And it what yes, better sir. franchise than this Go fucking franchise to do it because their last movie was about toxic fucking fandom. Like, yeah, why dude. not that's take irony, that right? theory to that's task it. right after that movie? I'll comes tell out. you this: yes. if that's what they're doing, they better fucking nail it in the reveal. When they when they when that script better fucking be fire when they come to nail that because it is so dumb to me to make your company the bad guy and divide <laughs> fans and have mm -hmm. a bunch of people fucking boycotting the goddamn movie and it's like oh my god it's like when someone lights a fucking firecracker and they thought it was a goddamn sparkler but it's a huge it's a goddamn fucking, right you know launcher. it's just like, like no way home it's just like no way home they're hoping that I think these plants are intentional. I think these plants of, oh, no, she's actually in it, are intentional because it's going to make people mm -hmm. go opening night like they did for No Way Home. Okay, I got to find out what's real. Yep. Like, is this real or not? And then Paramount doesn't look like the bad guy because that was the plan all along. We it's wanted to leave you God. in suspense. Yeah, let's That's see. Well, well, you know, God. what I like, what, you know, going back to Christian, I mean, you cannot – compare tom cruise it's ridiculous to, to I mean, nev campbell i mean it is sake. it is like literally it, it's the stupidest argument that's like uh during the johnny depp amber Heard trial when amber Heard was trying to compare herself to jason momoa and the other actors and it's like i'm the same like, what the fuck you smoke 
God damn. Dumb. I told you to be sober. Hey, man, when she you was came in here. the fucking ward, okay? Yes, yeah, she was. she's the yes, fucking she shit, man. She was Mira. But no, uh, you know, yeah, I, I, it, like you know, Top Gun Maverick, dude, it surpassed. Oh, I think it got a billion, billion a billion, a billion dollars. dollars, a billion. Yes, exactly. I mean, dude, it, it's it dropping was... week to week at like the super small numbers. This <laughs> right? movie is just yeah. absolutely ass fucking the box office. It's so bad, yeah. Uh, but you know, it, it it was such an incredible movie, and and you know, I think Mike had said this, uh, and and Christian is on exactly the same point. Tom Cruise is one of the last true action stars that are left that are making ho uh, Hollywood movies. A, yeah. Like, and, and it's not like it's not it's not sexism. It has nothing to do with with the gender. It's it's fucking Tom Cruise, man. Like he made the money based on the bo the box office paid him. He got his dues. It's the great it, like for him in his career. It is the the biggest box office movie Tom Cruise has ever had in his career. In his fucking career, Tom Cruise. It's literally the biggest. So That's the amazing. fact that Neff Campbell, look, I'm not saying that she shouldn't have been paid a fair wage. Of course she should. I mean, of course. I mean, and, and no one's gonna say that she shouldn't. But the, this whole, this whole thing that they're they're drumming up and saying that all oh, th this drama with Neff Campbell is she in it? Is she in it? Or she's not in it? Uh, the the money thing. Going to your point, if this is a, a ploy to get people into the theater. That's that is a fucking risky ploy if it doesn't play out. Yeah, Nev, it, we want you to tell people we didn't want to pay. You. Right, it is very risky because it. Can <laughs> like, that's so hard something. to believe when you say it out loud. Isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's right? pretty crazy. This, it's pretty crazy. Mike, I guarantee. Well, I, I shouldn't say guarantee you. I, I gentlemen's bet one dollar. I will PayPal it to you when this movie comes out. All this shit is going to be a lot more interesting than the fucking movie. Mark my words. And I hate that. <laughs> That's what I hate, though. Like, Scream 5 was so fun because it was like, yay, Scream. And now we're like, mm -hmm. it was never in the movie. If she's not in the movie, then I'll boycott the movie. But I don't know if she's in the movie because so-and-so said she was. But so-and-so said she wasn't. Mm -hmm. She said she wasn't in the fucking movie. And I'm like, I just did. Jesus fucking Christ. Like, they literally, Scream 5 was all about getting Nev and everybody away from the franchise. They told mm -hmm. us this. They said, we're passing the torch. There's a fucking joke in the end of the movie about how you like that torch, bitch. You know, like they told us they were passing the torch. They were getting Nev. But now they've made it to where it's like, if you fucking pass the torch, I'll never watch another goddamn screen movie yeah. and give you pieces of shit. You know, it's like, I don't, dude, if it is, if this is a studio thing, um, <laughs> this is on the talking? level like Blair Witch fucking pretending that shit was real. It's on the level like Paranormal Activity. This this yeah, could so blow it's not up unheard of. Yeah. It's not it's, unheard of. It's risky it's, as fuck, but it's not unheard of. But to your I, point about Tom Cruise and Nev Campbell, right? Yes. And to your point so, about Tom Cruise and Nev Campbell, you don't fuck with Tom Cruise's money because he'll just fucking send the Church of Scientology after you, and they'll fucking make you disappear. <laughs> You'll be yeah, a mindless so like, zombie lost in the catacombs somewhere in Egypt. Exactly. <laughs> no. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, uh, right. but yeah, we could go all night on this fucking topic. But yeah, it's so confusing. No one knows what the fuck to do. I know. Man. It's it's. I know. Just, it's it's awesome. you know it's a wild journey though man so it's uh it'll be interesting when this fucking thing comes out but clench guys, those cheeks man yeah you guys have been awesome i want to thank both of you for your time i can't believe we got jay too you know hey man it's it was hard enough lot. getting mike but mike oh well, hold on gonna, christian i think jay can make it yeah <laughs> and we gotta jay. say jay our viewers would be you know what i'm gonna ask our viewers would be angry at us if we did not ask for dr loomis to make an appearance before we wrap the show um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's fine. It's no problem. Uh, your your viewers on uh, uh, Unita, uh, Unata, Unita Carlots. Uh, it was really interesting here, and uh, both these gentlemen are fine gentlemen. Uh, I liked it a lot. Uh, it was fine, except in the day, I'm not a violent person, you assholes. Okay. <laughs> I didn't do shit that that little girl didn't ask for. She was protecting the serial killer, and I did everything I could. To get that little bitch to give me the location with her psychic powers. And she said, no. Guess what I did? I used her as bait. So that's it. But thank you for having me on this podcast to get that out. I wanted to clear that. I'm not going to jail like R. Kelly. I didn't piss on anything else. <laughs> Have a good night. Oh, brilliant. Man. Dr. Loomis, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, thank you. Man. No problem, and that man. clears the air. He is not song, a dick. It was, awesome. it, was, it was a pleasure. A long time viewer. So it's uh, it's really fucking great to have you guys on here. What do you guys have? Maybe Mike, do you just operate on a day to day basis? Like you just figure it out with the channel and 
plan out live streams? Do you know anything specific besides what you have talked about already? Just going to wake up in the morning and let whatever Nev Campbell news is in the air bend me over <laughs> and fuck me in the ass. Uh, basically dick with me all goddamn day long like I'm a pinata in, in, in a windy Kansas City wind. Yeah, that's that's my plan. You should interview every kid that goes and meets her at that convention next weekend just to see what she says. <laughs> <laughs> Halloween <laughs> update. Jim Jim 479 says he talked to Nev Campbell and she signed his fucking DVD. <laughs> that's going to be my Michael Lover 12 says he <laughs> talked to her. And said, tell me what really is going on now. MAGA Hat 9 says that Nev Campbell's a bitch. <laughs> we got he huge news. Huge, huge. <laughs> Oh shit! Yeah. All right. Well, shit, yeah. thank you guys so much for being on the show. Uh, we really appreciate it. And to all our listeners, thank you. We hope you enjoyed it. We love you, and we'll see you guys next time. Peace. This has been a production of the You Need a Horror Podcast. You need it, we got it. Thank you for listening.